Factor in a classic NFL rivalry. I've been waiting all day for this. This 12th night of November is a wet one in the New Jersey Meadowlands, but it hasn't dampened the enthusiasm of this crowd one iota as their New York Giants come out onto the field at Giants Stadium ready to take on Brian Urlacher and his Chicago Bears on NBC's Sunday Night Football. Al Michaels along with John Madden, Andrea Kramer, welcome to the Meadowlands. Two flagship franchises. These teams first met in 1925. Red Grange played in that game. How are they doing at the moment? Well, the Bears, a lot of people thought, had a chance to go unbeaten. At least that was the talk up until a couple of weeks ago. But that came to a screeching halt last week against a Miami team that had won only one game going into Chicago. The Bears turned it over six times, lost the game. The question is, was that an omen or a speed bump? Stay tuned. As far as the Giants are concerned they started the season raggedly they were one and two a terrible loss in Seattle there was some finger pointing going on after that game but they had a bye week they've gotten it all together and they have won five straight their mark is six and two but they are decimated by injuries John five starters including Amani Toomer Michael Strahan won't play we all talk about depth in the NFL do the Giants have enough quality depth to beat a good team well you know we're going to find out tonight as head coach Tom Coughlin says. We can't worry about the guys that aren't here. We have to play the guys that are here and they're going to have to play well. But sometimes I think when this happens it's not only the guys that are stepping up and have to play but it's the other guys. It's the stars. Eli Manning has to play well. Plexico Burris. Uh, you know uh, Shockey has to play well. Uh, Antonio Pierce. I mean all their stars have to also step up. It just can't be where you say OK all the backups have to step up and play well. Everyone has to play well. Now they'll face the Chicago Bears if you're seven and one in the middle of the season you should say hey that's great we feel pretty good about ourselves. But then you have the game they played last week even their fans are saying what in the world was that how important is it for the Bears to get the taste of last week's loss to Miami out of their mouths tonight. I think it's important to get off to a good start I always said you know when you lose you also lose a little confidence and this bear team that comes in here tonight doesn't have a lot of offensive confidence. You know you you look and last week they had they had six turnovers. Rex Grossman had had three interceptions and and they're kind of worried about that. You know you talk to Ron Turner the offensive coordinator and he says we want to run the ball tonight. We want to have a ball control offense. I'll tell you what would hurt the Chicago Bear team if they had a couple of turnovers early in this game tonight. Wouldn't this crowd love to see that crowd can't wait. We can't wait. Giants Bears. I said. can speak for myself and, and and the team that I'm on. We want to play against the best. I think it's a big test for our offense. I think it's something we're looking forward to. I love playing football in general, but something about playing on prime time Sunday night and when the lights come on, it's time to play. Light rain at the moment. Bears Giants. Big story in Chicago after last week's game was Brian Urlacher who sprained his toe didn't practice earlier in the week goes tonight. What's the latest on Brian Andrea. 
Well, Al, Erlacher told me that he does not have turf toe, as has been reported, but rather a sprained ligament on the top side of his left foot by his big toe. He said it's sore, but once it gets out there, it'll be full speed. Now, the toe is wrapped, and he's also wearing a thick protective piece molded to his shoe to guard against getting stepped on again. Now, as for the weather, yes, as you said, it is raining, and as usual for Giant Stadium, the winds are swirling. Which will make it difficult for the kickers, as it normally does, and speaking of kickers, Robbie Gold will be kicking off for the Chicago Bears, and that is the way it's pronounced. G-O-U-L-D, pronounced gold. He's had a perfect season. Hasn't missed a field goal attempt, nor an extra point. Derek Ward, one of the changes the Giants have had to make because they had to shuffle their special teams because of all of the injuries, and Ward will run the kick back from the nine-yard line. Out past the 20, he comes. And he gets spun down up at the 29 yard line by Mark Bradley. And let's take a look at the New York offense. Eli Manning, Ole Miss. Tiki Barber, University of Virginia. Jim Finn, University of Pennsylvania. Plexico Burris, Michigan State. Tim Carter, Auburn University. Jeremy Shockey. University of Miami. Luke Pettigrew, Notre Dame. Dave Deal, University of Chief Alina Wick. Sean O'Hara, Rutgers University. Chris Snee, Boston College. Kareem McKenzie, Penn State. Carter taking the spot of Amani Toomer, had knee surgery, is gone for the year. Manning starts the game with a pass to Burris, who missed last week's game here against Houston with back spasm. Back tonight and back with a 16 yard gain on the first play of the game tackled by Daniel Manning. You know it's interesting Al Charles Tillman is going to play man to man on Plexico Burris all night. Burris said that he wanted that didn't believe the Bears would do it but they are doing it they're going to play him man to man again with Charles Tillman. First and 10 for the Giants at the 45 yard line. Giants on top by two games and trying to maintain that two game cushion in the NFC East. And they give it to Tiki Barber and he won't go anywhere on his first carry of the night. Tommy Harris makes the tackle and John you circle the Giants right tackle with a change over there. Yeah it's a it was a tight end and it was Rich Soybert. What they do is they'll go two tight ends but Rich Soybert is a is a guard and they have him playing tight end. And again they'll they'll do it on first down like they did there and it can be a run but they will also pass when Seibert is in there. Seibert back on the bench right now it's second down and nine. David Tyree is the third wide receiver he's a special teams maven but he'll see some offensive action tonight again because of the injury to Toomer and Tiki Barber who leads the league in rushing will add to that total across the 50 he goes to the 35 of the Chicago Bears Tiki Barber now approaching the 900 yard mark this season and averaging over four and a half yards per carry. You know one thing about this giant team they will pull all their offensive linemen. Now we always think of a guard pulling here you see 77 Luke Pettigo pull get that block right there. It's a little counter and they pull again and that's that's the thing Tiki Barber was saying the other day he said he thinks that those kinds of runs can take advantage of Brian Urlacher's quickness. Five receivers set empty backfield after that 18 yard barber run and here's Burris with another first down but a penalty. Ed Hockley is the referee for the moment the ball will be spotted at the 23 yard line but Hockley will come in to make the call. You know it's interesting Charles Tillman is on Plexigo Burris but he's playing off the offense. The left tackle is the end man on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty and repeat first down. That's one of the problems if you, if you go five receivers as they did right there you got to line up the right way and they didn't. Right and you know a lot of times they'll blame the tackle for that you know and someone will say it's a penalty on the tackle and they'll show the it's not the tackle's fault it means that the end man on the line of scrimmage wasn't up that he was back off and the man outside the tackle there has to be a man outside the offensive tackle on the line of scrimmage. Back to the 41 now on first down and 15. The two tight ends set for the Giants. They give the ball to Barber. Big hole through the middle. Tiki inside the 30. And Tiki picks up the first down before he gets wrestled down by Ogunleye at the 20 yard line. That is a gain of 21 after his 18 yard pickup on his first carry. Yeah, did you see that play, Al? You know, we were talking about Cybert and how he comes in as a tight end. 
but he'll also pull. Here you see he is right here. He's a tight end. Now he is going to come to this side and lead the play. You see him come right there and stop and then come back and he traps the nose tackle and Tiki Barber runs right off of that. Giants at the 20 on the game's opening drive. The drive started back at the 29. Manning one for one. Barber with three carries for 40 yards. Manning, good protection, swings it out. Barber makes the catch. And picks up about five. Let's see the Chicago defense here. Adewale Ogunleya, Tonyville High School. Tommy Harris, the University of Oklahoma. Tank Johnson, McClintock High School. Alex Brown, the Mighty Gators. Hunter Hillenmeyer, Vanderbilt. Brian Erlacher, University of New Mexico. Lance Briggs, University of Arizona. Charles Tillman, the University of Louisiana. Danielle Manning, Abilene Christian. Todd Johnson, Florida. Nathan Vasher, the University of Texas. Todd Johnson taking the spot of Mike Brown, the strong safety. He's out for the season, and that's a big blow for Chicago. That hurt a couple of weeks ago. Second down and five. Manning finding room, and then the pass is knocked away. Hunter Hillenmeyer, the outside linebacker, was there to knock it up into the air, and it will be third down and five. And once again, John, as was the case last year, that Chicago defense is I mean that's what Chicago is all about this year they're better offensively but it, it comes back to this unit. Yeah and it all starts in the middle right there with number 91 Tommy Harris who I think is one of the best defensive tackles in football and then of course Brian Erlacher right behind them but I will say this this giant offensive line is winning the battle of the Lions right off the bat here third and five they're showing blitz from the outside Brandon Jacobs comes into the game and sets up on the other side of Manning. The blitz is on. Manning gets it away, and that pass is high. So a good start, but then they bog down at the finish, and they'll have to settle for a field goal attempt on the game's opening drive. You know, again, Charles Tillman was playing off Plexico Burris here. You can see him off here, and I'm surprised that he's not coming up and pressing. We're getting tighter because if he doesn't do that, Burris is going to catch things in front of him all night, and then maybe when he does get him up there, he's going to go to work on him deep. Jay Feely will attempt a 33 yard field goal. Jeff Fiegels will hold. And that kick is no good. And again, it's Giant Stadium. You've got the swirling wind, so a very promising start. And an ugly finish on that drive for the Giants as Chicago takes over when we come back. To you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 41. By Dodge, you can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge, by Subway Restaurant, Subway Eat Fresh, and by Budweiser Select, brewed longer for a bold taste that finishes clean. Expect everything. From Times Square across the river, we come to the Meadowlands, where the Giants missed a 33-yard field goal, and Chicago takes over for the first time offensively at its own 24-yard line. Rex Grossman is the quarterback. They start on the ground with Thomas Jones. He gets up to the 25 and will meet the Chicago offense. Rex Grossman, Florida Gators. Thomas Jones, the University of Virginia. Jason McKee, Temple. Musin Muhammad, Michigan State University. Rashid Davis, San Jose State University. Desmond Clark, Wake Forest University. John Tate, Brigham Young University. Ruben Brown, Pitt. Olin Cruz, University of Washington. Roberto Garza, Texas A&M Kingsville. Fred Miller, Baylor University. On second down and nine, the pass to Rashid Davis is through his hands. And Speaking of Rasheed Davis right off the bat the guy that they're really going to miss is Bernard Berrien who's become he's their number two receiver to Moussa Mohammed but of late he has been their deep threat and it's Davis who gets the start because Berrien's hurt. And watch who comes here R.W. McCord is he the Giants are a nickel or five defensive back and they bring McWhorters on the blitz and it looked like if he would have gone right at Grossman he could have hit him when he threw that thing. Third down and nine. Up at the 25 yard line. Grossman coming off that three interception game and he also fumbled and he gets whacked as he throws and it is intercepted at the 32 yard line. Matthias Kiwanuka 
the rookie out of Boston College, the number one draft choice, and the guy who's getting the start because both giant defensive ends are hurt, just intercepts his first career pass and gives the Giants a first and goal. And look at Grossman's helmet. That tells the story. You're right, and the blitz is going to come from the other side. This time it's coming from his backside. You see the back steps up, and then he comes in. and see Grossman is looking to his right. He gets hit right there by two guys. And just as he throws it at that's a zone dog where they overload the right side come from that side drop in the left side and there was Kiwanuka Fred Robbins the tackle will Demps the safety the two guys to hit him with Michael Strahan out and O.C. Human you're out those are the two starters and a lot of people were surprised when they went in the draft and picked a defensive end number one that was the guy right there Kiwanuka first and goal at the one yard line. And they'll give it to Brandon Jacobs, and he's good as gold on a first and goal. We have all the things that couldn't happen to the Chicago Bears. That's what we talked about. They can't have a turnover early. They had six of them last week. They lost to Miami, and they start right now. But the Giants made that happen. I mean, they come on a dog from the backside. They blitz. They get the ball. And then this is just way too easy when Brandon Jacobs can go into the end zone like that. And that's an interesting celebration. I'm not quite sure what that was, but it could be an ode to his wife, who I believe I read last week that she was pregnant. He puts the ball under his jersey. I would say that could be an ode to his wife. And meanwhile, unsportsmanlike conduct for the ode. For the ode. We are apparently will be enforced on the kickoff. They called it on Jacobs. I don't think in your own I don't think you can celebrate with the ball isn't that one of the rules. Well I know you can't go to the ground because yes. you, you or you can't use a prop. Maybe it's a group celebration. Well I, I assume that's that was the ode right there. Yeah, then yeah. you've got the group celebration and that's probably the reason for the unsportsmanlike conduct. Who knows. In any event it will be assessed on the kickoff. Jay Feely for the extra point. So Kiwanuka sets it up with the interception, but credit Robbins and Demps for creating that interception. On Grossman second under his shirt, when Jacobs did, it was considered a prop, and so that cost him 15 yards, and you saw the exasperation plus on the face of Coughlin, and now Feely's kick is a bouncing ball, fielded up at the 32-yard line, taken there, and run back to the 45 by Jason McKee. The Bears fullback out to the 45 yard line. So here comes Grossman taking over near midfield. Three picks last week. Starts with a pick tonight with nine minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. The Giants on top by a score of seven to nothing. And what about that San Diego win? Trailing at one point by three touchdowns at two points. To Cincinnati. Thomas Jones starts this drive with a gain of three. Philip Rivers, and of course, <laughs> with Manning in the game, and Rivers going to San Diego as part of that whole situation in the draft two years ago. Phenomenal day for him. Tomlinson, the Chargers, 42 second half points. They'll go against Denver. Denver beat Oakland today, a week from tonight. So much for Marty Ball, huh? Wow. I think Marty Ball is gone, gone. to San Diego. Forever. Second and seven, and it's lofted toward Mohammed, but Webster got his hand in there to bat it away, incomplete. And let's take a look at the Giants' starting defense. William Joseph, University of Miami. Barry Cofield, Northwestern. Fred Robbins, Wake Forbes. Matthias Kiwanuka, Boston College. Bridget Torver, Auburn. Antonio Pierce, Mount San Antonio Junior College. Jarris Wilkinson, Georgia Tech. Corey Webster, LSU. Will Demps, San Diego State. Jabril Wilson, Tennessee. Sam Madison, Louisville. They get Madison back, but they're still minus four guys who would be starters defensively and Carlos Emmons is active but probably won't play third down and seven and that pass is reached out for and caught that's a great catch by Moussin Mohammed. Yeah, and that's the first time that the the Giants went their nickel defense and didn't come with the blitz remember earlier we saw McWhorton's come in the blitz on one side then Will Demps came in the other side that time they went nickel but they just dropped into their zones. Muhammad makes a heck of a catch on that, and Grossman makes a very good throw. 
Emmons inactive tonight. That's the fifth would be starter not in the lineup. So the Giants with a patchwork defense. You've got Thomas Jones going to the outside and Jones gets ridden out of bounds by Demps after a gain of about eight yards. Thomas Jones he's their ace running back but he's a guy who's averaging three point eight per rush. That's less than the league average. The Bears John is a team averaging only three point four yards per rush and that normally doesn't get it done. No but uh, Rex Grossman has really picked up in that and the passing game has picked up but I think that if Rex Grossman is going to be successful over a season they need a better running game to help them than they have now. We'll also see some of Cedric Benson tonight but for the moment it's Jones and Jones gets swallowed. William Joseph is right there. Reggie Torbor is right there as well. And of course the Giants these days uh, emulating a jump shot after a sack or a stoppage of a run behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, William Joseph is a tackle and because of the the injuries he's playing defensive end and you see him right here he just takes a hard inside no one blocks him and of course that gets a penetration and that's always going to stop the run. Third down and five now at the thirty five Grossman is one of his first four for 13 yards. Looking left. Now to the right now loses the ball you've got penalty flags and you've got Garza coming up with the ball at the 38 yard line it was McWhorters who came in and may have grabbed the face mask with Thomas Jones or he Jones may have grabbed McWhorters face mask. Well that's a plan that the Giants have is to is to get in nickel on passing downs when they want to spread out with three wide receivers and blitz them from the corners. And it's working. The Bears so far don't have an answer to the nickel blitz of the Giants. Number 20. The penalty is declined. Brings up fourth down. That's Jones, who might have not only held, but had his face mask as well. In either event, it's fourth down. Take a look again. Yeah, we always talk about a running back, and we know that that's what he has to do. You see McWhorters come here off the blitz, and Jones did grab him, but it didn't do a heck of a lot of good because McWhorters right there still gets to Grossman and knocks the ball out of his hand. This is not the way the Bears wanted to start with their offense to get confidence from what they did last week. Mm -mm. Bears fans a little nervous at the moment about this offense and the way it's gone as Maynard sends it into the end zone not only last week but in the Arizona game despite the fact they won the game they also turned the ball over six times that night the defense won it Giants get it back leading seven to nothing. Hey over here he Barber has his right thumb now wrapped and we'll check that out with Andrew in just a second as the Giants begin this drive after the touchback at their own 20 yard line New York up seven to nothing halfway through the opening quarter at the Meadowlands fake to Barber. Manning's been phenomenal on play action this season. Not here though. Tillman with the interception. Tillman into Giants territory to the 45 yard line. Good double coverage. Burris, the intended receiver. The pass was underthrown by Manning, and Chicago is back in business. Manning underthrew that one, but I think the Giants got a little greedy. I mean, they saw that they had had man to man out there with Charles Tillman, but he was playing off. And now he sneaks up there, so they're going to get it deep. You see. He sneaks up but then he bails out and he's just going to run with Plexico Burris and he has a little help from the safety Danielle Manning over the top. So he's out there man to man and they looked like they knew they had man to man and they just couldn't take that short stuff in front of him. They had to go deep. He threw it short and was intercepted. Cedric Benson is the running back fourth guy picked in the draft three years ago and that pass is incomplete. So two very ragged series penalty flag here thus far for Chicago as Grossman has started the night where he left off last week. Grossman is saying he got roughed on that. Hockey he says. Foul, roughing the passer. Defense at the quarterback in the head. 10 yard penalty first down. And that'll take the ball to the 30 yard line. A look here. You see Grossman as he as he steps up there the ball is gone you just see that hand come out and hit him in the head. Fred Robbins who created the earlier interception by getting 
to Grossman. The ball is now at the 30 yard line. First down for Chicago. Here's Benson. And Benson goes nowhere. So the Giant defense playing as if every guy who was injured was in there. They look no different, at least at the outset. Barry Colfield, the rookie tackle out of Northwestern, makes the stop. You know, Barry Cofield has been playing very well and you know you talk to players and coaches and they say that you know he never looked like a rookie he never acted like a rookie and probably more important than anything he's never played like a rookie. I mean, I mean he and Fred Robbins the two defensive tackles for the Giants are very stout inside. Second down and 11 the short drop. Grossman comes this way the pass is a little underthrown and then it's incomplete. Davis had it but not long enough and the pass is incomplete. Jabril Wilson that time helping to dislodge it will be third down and 11. Take another look at this. I thought he had it long enough. Wilson comes sliding in to knock it out. And then Chicago recovers anyway otherwise you had a possible challenge. And here's his third down uh, a giant nickel defense again this time with a three man line they've had a lot of success blitz in this situation they're not now they're going the opposite third and 11 and that pass is juggled and that's not caught I said earlier when Davis it was ruled incomplete had he fumbled it with the new ruling this year you can challenge it but it has to be clear as to who recovers it the Bears recovered that time Davis can't handle it. And the Bears are forced to kick again. Yeah, here's the opposite of bringing pressure. They just rushed two guys and dropped nine. Now that is throwing into coverage, and that's what they're trying to do to Rex Grossman. You know, is, is show him something, then do something else. You'll know, get him to feel that this is what the defense is going to do, and then give him a different picture. Robbie Gold hasn't missed a kick all season. This will test him. Swirling wind, 49-yard attempt. Maynard puts it down. And Robbie Gold's perfect season continues. Chicago on the board for three. Down by four following the pick. 7 3 Giants. Pacific, 8 Central and Mountain, right here on NBC. Robbie Gold to kick off. Fielded at the two yard line by Derek Ward. And Ward with a good run back all the way up to the 33. We started to talk about Barber before. Andrea, what do you know? Well, he's got a sprained right thumb. Now, when he was on the bench, they taped it, and the first thing they did was hand him a ball to make sure that he can hold it. He's back in the game, obviously, he hasn't had a carry yet, so we'll monitor and see how he does. Hasn't had a carry since he had it wrapped. He had three carries for 40 yards on that first drive. Then he came out, had it wrapped, and let's see what happens here at the 32 yard line first now. He just has to remember to keep it high and tight. Which he's done with tremendous effectiveness since Coughlin took over in 2004. He used to be a fumbler, but now, of course, he almost never fumbles, and almost everybody knows that Tiki Barber, as you take a look at what he's done early on, remember they, they thought of him as like a third down back and a Dave Meggett kind of guy. And, you see his numbers for the first five years of his career and then all of a sudden people began to realize this guy can do everything. You know, and he just seems to get better. I mean he gets I think he's better this year than he was last year and I think as weeks go on and I watch him on film and tapes and he looks better each week than he did the week before. And then here's a guy that's retiring. And it sounds as if it's unconditional. Can't be talked out of it. The screen set up to the other tight end, Shanko, was Jeremy Shockey, the number one tight end. And he has stopped at the 33 yard line. A lot of the people around the Giants knew that, you know, Tiki had been talking about it. Do you think there is any chance that he played next year? I mean, he says no. You know, in talking to him, I don't think there's any chance that he's going to play. I mean, in his, his mind, he said that, you know, now he wants to go out on top. I mean, he comes in today, he's a leading rusher in the NFL. He wants to go out that way. He doesn't want to go out as a broken down back and, and you know a guy that used to be good and he said you know he's at the top and, and he wants to feel good the rest of his life third and eight and that's incomplete if he goes out on top I mean he'll go out on top like Jim Brown went out on top or like Sandy Koufax went out 
on top because the Giants are a legitimate Super Bowl contender at least at this point and Tiki Barber is leading the league in rushing. Well he said you know it's not it's not the games he said it's the week and he said you know it's the off season and he's not he doesn't have the same feeling to have the same work in the off season. It's not you know the week he said and then when he really knew it he said he goes to Philadelphia and he said it's it's Philly week it's it's mm -hmm. Eagles we got a great he said I didn't feel anything. And he said I knew right then when I couldn't feel anything in Philly week it was time to get out. Jeff Fiegel's punt is fielded but out of bounds at the 23 yard line. Devin Hester is a great run back guy. He couldn't wait to run it back. The only problem was he was on the chalk. Meanwhile Rex Grossman a guy being talked about a month ago as a potential league MVP because of those numbers he was tremendous over the first four games. But up and down since good game against Buffalo terrible game at Arizona though the defense won it against San Francisco he was very good and then last week he was terrible again so all of a sudden you've got a guy being talked about as an MVP candidate about five weeks ago and now there are people in Chicago saying get Brian Greasy in there I mean those are the vagaries of the NFL here's Grossman over the middle and that pass is caught at the 45 yard line by Moose and Mohammed and a first down. At midfield. Yeah, we talked about Bernard Berry and being out of there, and he was kind of a speed guy. And they now with uh, with with Berry and out there, then Muhammad has taken Berry in's place, and he's running those types of patterns. But uh, when Muhammad does it like this, he has to do, do it with moves. He's going to be under control, run those deep digs or ins, those kinds of things, double move to go deep, and and they miss Berry and speed. Eight years of Carolina, now two years in Chicago for Lucy Mohammed, and the pass here to the fullback, Jason McKee. He's out of bounds at the 44. Bernard Berrien, and there he is, rib injury. Can't play tonight, might be able to play next week. The Bears can only hope against the Jets as they come back here, but he's made a tremendous difference in the Chicago attack. Well, he gave him that speed. I mean, he's the guy that stretches the field and makes that safety stay back and and when you have that speed guy stretching the field it makes everything else you do a lot easier. Toss back here to Cedric Benson and he goes nowhere. Barry Cofield the rookie makes the tackle Cedric Benson number one pick in 05 fourth overall pick out of the University of Texas. You know and the tackles like uh, Barry Cofield have to make that play they run the line because that's the old toss crack where you toss the ball and the outside receiver comes in and cracks the end man on the line of scrimmage and you have to help that end man that's being cracked and the way to do that is pursuit down the line by your defensive tackle. Benson lost five. Chicago tonight six rushes for three net yards. Third down and eight from the 49 yard line flag whistle before the snap. One thing we see R.W. McWhorter's coming on a blitz again. This is where, where the Giants have really gotten in a bind. Five yard penalty. It's third down. Fred Miller. Where they've really gotten him in a bind is they is they go three wide receivers and then the Giants bring in their nickel and then with the blitzes they've really gotten to him. But they haven't blitzed every time. Remember the last time they dropped nine with this pass play here again they just blitzed. What do you suspect here John third down would, and 13. I would think they would drop. I don't think that this would be a blitzing situation. Bears have to get to the Giants 41 to convert. Out of the shotgun first time this season first time the Bears have used the shotgun all year and the pass is incomplete intended for Mohammed closing quickly. The secondary led by the safety Jabril Wilson. So the Bears the Bears and the Bucks the only teams in the league through the first half of the season not to use the gun we were talking to Grossman about it last night he said you know what I wouldn't mind doing it and he said I think the offensive line has politicked for it. Yeah I was really surprised that you would not use a shotgun and use it the first time in this game on the road against these Giants but I think they think on third down it's going to help him see the defense better and they use it on the third and 13 and that's a floating kick that hangs up in the wind and goes out of bounds at about the 25 yard line kicked by Maynard there the Giants will take over they'll spot the ball at the 27 yard line with two minutes remaining in the opening quarter Boris the ex Steeler came over here last season 
did some talking this week. He was talking about Chicago's cornerbacks, talking about Tillman and Vasher, and kind of dissing him. Uh, they want to come out, bump and press one on one. Let's go out there and have fun. Let's get it, he says. And this is a guy coming off a week when he was inactive because of back spasms. And there he is, a man to man press coverage against Charles Tillman. First and ten, and that pass is caught by David Tyree, and that is Erlacher is there, but Tyree is able to hang on, and Tom Coughlin's out about 10 yards out onto the field screaming about a foul. I think that he thought that Erlacher took a swing when uh, Tyree was down. Maybe he was just trying to knock the ball out of there. Giant injury, Pettigue, injury timeout. And plenty to talk about on NBCSports.com. Pettigue, who's had back spasms, but here actually he gets rolled up on and has to come out at least for one play. Well, that's a tough one where you're blocking your guy and you're blocking your guy, and then you get rolled up from the other side. Bob Whitfield, the 15 year veteran, longtime former Falcon, takes his spot. And here goes Barber, and he goes nowhere. And you've got Erlacher in the middle of the action. There, Erlocker made the the tackle on Tyree. It looked as if he might have thrown a punch. That's why Coughlin, from his angle, had come out onto the field. We looked at the replay, and there wasn't. And Brian in on the play again. It'll be third down and four upcoming. I mean, he reads so well. You see, see, he's back off about five yards, so he can see everything that happens. Then he takes that little pop step, then goes right in, takes on Shockey, but doesn't take the square. Runs right through his shoulder, right into Barber. I mean that's that's what you know they talk about runners that run downhill. Erlacher is a middle linebacker that runs downhill. Now it's third down and five. Pressure on Manning and he gets it away and the pass is incomplete. The coverage is good and that is Tyree seeing more offensive action tonight again with Tumor hurt. Tyree moves up a spot. Carter moves into the starting lineup and for Manning and the Giants in comes the punting unit. You know I think in this in this first half here this first quarter what we're seeing is two young quarterbacks. Manning four of nine for 28 yards after a good start in the first drive. Grossman three of nine for 45. You've got Fiegel's kicking. Hester has run back two punts for touchdowns this season. He's also prone to fumbling and that kick by Fiegel's is out of bounds and they'll spot it out past the 30. To the 35 yard line. These two teams first met back in 1925. We talked about it, 73,000 spectators. Red Grange was playing in his fourth game. They met six times in a championship game. Of course, you can't meet in the Super Bowl, so they met in those championship games in the pre Super Bowl era. 40 Bears and Giants in the Hall of Fame. And of course, you think about the Mara family, you think about George Hallis. And I mean it starts there and then just goes down through the years. The sneaker game. The sneakers. <laughs> yep. First and ten the ball at the 35 yard line for the Bears as Grossman gives the ball to Jones and Jones loses the ball. Scramble at the 25 yard line. Giants have it. You know, isn't it something the Bears come off last week against Miami where they had six turnovers? So now what the Giants do is they see that and they know the way to beat the Bears is you have to get turnovers. You have to go after the ball. You have to strip the ball. You have to do those kinds of things. And that's the way their defense is playing in this first quarter. Jarris Wilkinson is the linebacker right there. And you see him get that left hand in there. And then Jabril Wilson came up and pulled it out. And go figure. Thomas Jones had more touches without a fumble 183 than anybody in the league at this point. So that's very uncharacteristic Wilson recovering the ball at the 31 yard line they give it now to Barber Barber starts to stumble and a flag comes in at the end and Tiki is down after a gain of about two and that should well after the flag after they. Tell us what the call is. They'll start the clock again, and it might take us down to the end of the first quarter. Holding offense number 60, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. Center Sean O'Hara. 
Sean O'Hara I went to practice uh, on Friday and he was probably the happiest guy in practice because he went to Rutgers oh, Rutgers boy. beat Louisville the night before and you talk about braggadocious there was one braggadocious offensive lineman and he was a, a walk on at Rutgers you know, and he's, he's made himself into a good NFL center and this is this is a strong offensive line I mean they lose Luke Pettigrew but then Bob Whitfield comes in last week he had to come in for right tackle Kareem McKenzie and Bob Whitfield is still a very good NFL tackle first and 20 and as I say they wind the clock after the penalty call and they don't get it off and that'll do it for the first quarter end of one at the Meadowlands in New Jersey the New York Giants seven the Chicago Bears three and NBC Sunday Night Football continues right after these messages. And a great catch for a touchdown. Touchdown! Tomlin's in his hand. You just give it to the great back. Let him do it himself. And back we come to the Meadowlands. Al Michaels, John Madden, Andrea Kramer start the second quarter. First and 20 for the Giants in Bears territory. The pass is swung out to Tiki Barber, and he's taken down after a short gain by the outside linebacker. Hunter Hillenmeyer. Tiki Barber is now the Giants' leading receiver. He and Amani Toomer had each had 32 this season coming into the game, and that also puts him in front of a Toomer on the career list as well. Manning. Fakes and goes back oh. that way. And Barber has nowhere to go. Took a little look back to see if anybody was trailing. Yeah, Eli Manning was lucky on that one and he didn't get in trouble. There has to be someone illegally downfield because it was a screen pass to the left. And when he was ready to throw it, he couldn't throw it, so he had to back up. Flag came in at the end of the play. So when he backed up, then then you're gonna have illegal man downfield. I know that you have illegal lineman downfield. And that's what you can do to a screen. If you throw the timing of a screen off, then the play doesn't have a chance, and it's going to result usually in something bad happening to the offense. Ed Hockley. They were followed the by both teams on the play. An eligible receiver downfield by the offense, number 69. There was also holding defense, number 31. The penalty's offset. Replay second down. Correction, number 60. Number 60 was illegally downfield. That's Sean O'Hara on one side, Nathan Vasher on the other side as it begins to rain lightly again. Yeah, but you can't blame the offensive lineman for that. Again, the, the screen was a timing thing, like I said, and the timing was thrown off. Then Eli Manning went back, and then he looked like he was trying to throw it away, but he did get it out there to Tiki Barber. But the Bears played that screen to their right very well. Second down and 16. Three wideouts in this set of the shotgun. Haven't seen Shockey catch a pass yet tonight. Caught eight last week against Houston. Swinging to the outside. Tyree makes the catch, breaks a tackle, and takes it to the 28 yard line. Got out of the grasp of Nathan Vasher and takes it inside the 30, where it'll be third down and six upcoming. That was interesting. You see where David Tyree came from. He was in the backfield. He started out. In a slot, and then he goes as the as a right halfback. He's looking there for Shockey. Then he comes back to Tyree, who, as a wide receiver, came out of the backfield. Third down will fall at seven. They'll spot it right at the 28-yard line. Manning operating from the gun. Bears moving around defensively, showing blitz. Here they come. Pressure is on, and the pass is short. Because uh, David Tyree was the intended receiver, but the heat was put on by Lance Briggs, the outside linebacker. And Eli Manning knew that he he was back in the shotgun, and that's one of the that's one of the reasons you get in the shotgun, so you can see the defense, you can see the blit, the the blitz, and and here is what he sees right there. And of course, when he comes free, Eli Manning knows I have to get rid of this ball right now. Now you have a 46-yard attempt. For Jay Feely, who going in the other direction, missed one from 33. Jeff Fiegel's now in his 19th season to hold, and that kick 
will draw its way through the upright started a little bit to the outside drew back in and Feely extends the giant lead to seven 10 3 New York early second quarter. Michael Strahan with a strained foot now the question is how long will he be out clearly tonight almost certainly next week and they're saying two to four weeks at the moment. Pick off field at five yard line by Rashid Davis. And Davis gets popped by Jay Feely is right in the middle of the action. The kicker sticking his nose in there to help in on the tackle. Now you don't hear that a lot. <laughs> the kicker sticking his nose in there. We got a story. I don't think I've ever used that phrase before. But here he is. We wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> You're right. He did stick his yeah. nose in there and everything else he had. He almost created a fumble here, too. Yeah, he, he tried to get his head on the ball. Well, he can he can walk into that training room tomorrow proudly. You know, if you're a coach, though, do you want to see your, your place checker doing that? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we're right guy, I would worry about or George. Yeah, I probably would have. From the 28 yard line, they give it to Cedric Benson, who vaults to nowhere. I don't think that the that the Bear rush offense has vaulted to anywhere all night, have they? Mm -hmm. I don't think they have plus yardage. No, they're they're they have eight carries right now for one gross yard. Yeah, and that's that's tough on a quarterback. You know, I've always said the the best friend of a quarterback is a good running back or a good running game. Rex Grossman is feeling a lot of pressure to do well in this game. A lot of pressure being put on his shoulders by not having a running game. Eight carries, one net yard, an eighth of a yard per carry. They swing it out to Benson, and he loses the ball. I heard the whistle. They're going to say it's down. Now you've got one of those plays again with the new rule if it's clearly recovered and you can tell on the recovery that the other team has it. Here comes Coughlin out on the field. And now they're imploring some of the Giants to perhaps review it but they want to take a look at it upstairs. Reggie Torbor is there. But it's pretty clear that he's down. So yeah, he if, is. If, he is down. If Coughlin wanted to review it, he would probably lose the challenge. But I tell you, the aggressiveness of this giant defense, the way they're flying around, the way they're tackling, is very, very impressive. And again, minus five starters and some big-time starters. And Grossman throws, and that pass is incomplete. He had two receivers in the area and Sam Madison going down thinking oh man I should have had that one. Remember how bad the giant defense looked early in the season remember that Seattle game that's when they had all the flack they looked like they didn't know who was going to cover who and then they then they had to buy and then they kind of simplified things with their defense they had you know team meeting Michael Strahan talk they did all these things and as a result since that time this defense has been playing outstanding. Tale of two seasons. Brad Maynard was a giant the last time they went to the Super Bowl in 2000. Line drive kick fielded at the 19 yard line. Chad Morton runs it back up to the 29 yard line. With 11 minutes and 44 seconds remaining in the half, Leon Joe just made that last hit. Giants have the ball and a seven point lead. McCaskey, the daughter of George Hallis goes to all the games home and road. Mike McCaskey, of course, is the chairman of the board. Their team is down by seven out of balls at the 29 yard line. And Tiki Barber will take it to the right side and pick up nine yards up to the 37 yard line before the cornerback Nathan Vasher stops him. Moved in behind a Jim Finn block. Yeah, you know, we talk about Tiki Barber and the way he holds the ball now high and tight. And I think. This is a pretty good example of it. I mean he gets that ball in there and it's high into his chest and it's tight and it's up by his right up there you see he's going to bring it right in darn near to his chin at the end. He keeps it in there so that there's no way that you can get the ball especially from behind by keeping it high and tight and in front you can't come up from behind and knock it out. Second and one. Barber. 
And this time he is stopped, and that's Erlocker, the defensive player of the year last season, making the tackle, showing no little effects from the toe injury last week. We talked about Barber before. The beginning of his career, the first seven seasons, one fumble every 41 touches, and then Tom Coughlin came here in 2004, and it's one every 124. In other words, he fumbles only about a third as often as he used to. Yeah, Tom Coughlin was saying the other day that when he first came here and watched films of Tiki Barber, he said, that's one that I can fix easily. And he did. Third and two. I'm taking my car into town tomorrow. <laughs> and that's a first down with Santi Shanko, the tight end up to the 42 yard line tackled there by Lance Briggs. You know, you talk about a study in contrast. Coughlin is about as expressive as any coach in the league. I mean, you know, an intense. I mean, it's just, and he has been throughout his entire career. And then on the other side, Lovey Smith. And Lovey, of course, you know, grew up in the, in the Tony Dungy regime at Tampa Bay and then went to St. Louis. And it's not that he's impassive, but that's about as, as, as agitated as he might get. But he's a very, very good coach. He's terrific. And that's caught up at the 50 yard line by Plexico Burris, and he will get a first down. Charles Tillman with the coverage. Yeah, I think they got a little impatient early. I think they could do this stuff all day to uh, uh, Plexico Burris. You know, if they just throw in front of Tillman, and then they, they, they saw that because. He's playing like he's pressing or playing tight, but then he's bailing out. So you get him when he's bailing out, then you just run him back and then you hook right in front of him. I think they can do this all night. First down across the 50 in Chicago territory with nine minutes to the half. Barber taken down there. You know, the thing about Lovey Smith, Lovey was actually interviewed for the Giants' job following. The 2003 season, they let Jim Fossil go. They talked to Smith, and they were very impressed. Though John Mara was extremely impressed, only of course, and then Lovey wound up a couple of weeks later as the head coach of the Chicago Bears as Coughlin came here. Yeah, right. I mean, it's interesting that the choice to be the Giant head coach after Jim Fossil was either Tom Coughlin or Lovey Smith. They chose Tom Coughlin, and then of course Lovey Smith went to the Bears. Second down and 10, 49-yard line. Manning stepping away from the heat throws and that pass is incomplete. Charles Tillman covering Plexico Burris crowd wants a flag. There is none. You know and they tried every time they tried to go deep to Plexico Burris Tillman has covered him well. Remember they went deep up the field now a crossing pattern to me is the same thing as deep because that's the way you use your speed one you run up and the other you just run across the field. Here he had to come under control a little too much. Now what you do is you come under control as a wide receiver against a zone and you run away from a man. That was man coverage and he should have run away from that. Third down and five three wide outs nickel coverage which means Ricky Manning Junior comes in as the fifth DB for Chicago and he's having a great season and that pass is dropped. That's Tyree over the middle incomplete Giants are forced to punt. Injury update from Andrea. Well, we saw Luke Pettigrew limp into the locker room. They took x-rays. They just came out to the sideline and read them. He has a fractured left fibula. He is obviously out. Wow. So it continues for the Giants, and that means we'll see Bob Whitfield, the longtime veteran, the 15-year veteran. Again, Bob Whitfield played right tackle in last week's game and had a couple of rough spots in the game against Houston, but for the 80 percent of the game he played very well. Fegels has been kicking away from Hester but not this time. So Hester with two punt returns for touchdowns each longer than 80 yards is strung out and has no place to go. Good job by the Giants to force him out of bounds on the near side at the 12 yard line with seven minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the opening half as they check out the Pettigue X-rays 10 three Giants. NBC NASCAR season finale from South Florida the Ford 400 that will determine the winner of the next Dell Cup five drivers there they are above the red line still with a shot at the title Jimmy Johnson in the lead second place finish today in Arizona Kevin Harvick won today's race outside Phoenix.
Seven fifty five remaining in the first half. Chicago backed up. They start this drive at their own 11 yard line. They have turned the ball over twice tonight. Lovey Smith saying we're a great team if we don't turn the ball over. And those two turnovers have led to 10 Giants points. Thomas Jones carry for two here up to the 13. Yeah and everyone talked about this game you know how it's going to be a physical game and 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 he who wins in the line is going to win the game. Well I'll tell you this I mean that's Matthias Kiwanuka right there but the the defense of the Giants have really dominated and and specifically the defensive line of the Giants. Stray hand reduced to the role of cheerleader second and eight from the 13. Grossman throws and that's juggled and not caught by McKee. Interesting thing thus far tonight the two quarterbacks Grossman telling us last night if he has a go to guy it's become the tight end Desmond Clark. He hasn't even thrown Clark's way tonight. And of course on the Giants side Jeremy Shockey hasn't caught a pass from Manning tonight. Yeah, and then and Eli Manning said you know that Shockey's the guy you have to get involved in the game early and he doesn't he, he hasn't done that but I'll tell you to me this this game has been about the Bears not being able to run the ball and the Giants aggressive defense going after him and in, in everything they do five receivers and then they give the ball to the running back and it's Jones and he can go nowhere so the Chicago Bears would pretty much live and die with a ground game as do a lot of teams that's ten carries tonight for five net yards on the ground you see Reggie Torbor made that tackle and, and that's the way you're supposed to tackle I mean, he just had his shoulder in there he wrapped his arms around him and drove him back and so he's one of those guys that you know as a backup guy special teams guy had to step up and play he's one of the guys that was stepping up and playing very well three and out deep in their own territory so the Giants should get the ball Some fairly decent feet decent field position but Brad Maynard with a tremendous kick backing Morton all the way to the 32 yard line and then Morton down the sideline Chad Morton will take it inside the 25 before he's finally knocked down so Maynard with a long kick but a little too low and the run back here sets the Giants up in pretty good shape. 52 yard boot but a 37 yard return they stop at the 31 you see he has his sideline here and what he does he dips to the right a little to get the bear coverage team to go to the right a little and then he comes back to the left and goes right up the boundary see him come in there hold those guys over there and then bring it back up to the sideline that was nice anytime the punter makes the tackle you know it's a long run back 37 yards on the return. Manning with a short field now at the 31 yard line. Right, and you'd think you'd go to Shockey here pretty soon, don't you? You would you'd have to think after his performance last week, they haven't gone to him tonight. They won't go to him here. They give the ball instead right up the middle to Barber. And Ogunlab makes the tackle. Jeremy Shockey, who last week had the eight grabs he's caught 31 this season and he's caught five touchdown passes this year. I know I went to practice the other day and they and they threw a lot to Shockey what they're doing now they're splitting them out there in the left you see he's out here right now coming in motion over here so they're starting to move him around a little second down and nine Manning looks the other way throws that's caught flex to go Burris and he gets inside the 20 and that'll be a first down or locker blitzing that time but Manning got it away moves the chains and I think that Eli Manning knows that when he sees Erlacher coming he knows that he has man coverage so he knows when he gets man coverage he wants to get to his outside receiver and of course that's flexible Burris right there and Burris has been able to do that kind of move that hook pattern in front of Charles Tillman this whole half. Now Burris gets a rest. The ball is at the 19 yard line. First down. Barber. Cuts it back, gain of one. Tiki tonight has carried the ball 10 times for 50 yards. You see what happened on that? They had Rich Seibert again, the guard playing tight end. 
And you know and that's good it gives you an extra blocker but if you looked at the bear defense up with nine guys up there in the front so you know it's tough to run against I mean you, you just look at there's nine bears right here I think because of the extra guard there and they just and, and they just stack it up I mean there's no place to run there's no place to cut back there's no place to bounce out to second down and nine three wide out shotgun Manning dancing away throws finds the open man that's burst and then he loses the ball at the five yard line he made the catch and then it is Charles Tillman who comes away with it and he loses the ball at the 13 yard line and there's a flag down on the Tillman run back. And that's a matchup we've been watching all night. Lex Burroughs Charles Charles Tillman playing against them and the Giants eventually wind up with the football but now let's see about the flag. Mexico Burroughs pointing to himself say that's that's me and of course once you catch the ball and fumble it of course it is you. Daniel Manning created the fumble. Possession. Holding offense number 70. 10 yard penalty enforced from the previous spot. Repeat second down. After all that it's simply a 10 yard penalty against the Giants. But let's go back and take a look at the pass to Burris. So See, the, the holding would have been negated here and Chicago held on to the ball. Yeah they had to rule that that was an incomplete pass because if that was a complete pass and a fumble then the ball would be from there right it'd be the Giants ball there wouldn't it and then the penalty would be from that spot. Yeah that's why that's why the Bears are out there with Hockley right now discussing what it is because it's one thing to have offensive holding before the change of possession. But you know, that, he, yeah he, let's, let's get Chicago the Chicago is challenging the ruling. Chicago believes that the player's knee was down before the fumble so the ball would be Chicago's ball and the penalty would not be enforced. Yep. Why? Right. So you, what you have here chronologically holding against the Giants which would be negated if Chicago winds up with the ball under the hood goes Hockley we'll be back. All right let's go through this chronologically here. The first thing that happens is you have holding against the Giants. You also have a fumble. Then the, the question becomes did the Bears when Tillman fumbled was his knee down. And meanwhile you can see how hard it's training right now. If his knee is down. Chicago will get the ball they'll wipe out the holding call left knee goes down Snee comes in and he is going to dislodge the ball. So this is what hockey Lee has to rule right now. Was he down with possession which he appears to be in which case forget about the offensive holding Chicago recovers the fumble in the meantime if his knee wasn't down he fumbles the ball and the Giants would recover and then they would assess the penalty against the Giants but it's a big call here for the Giants in as much as it's possession or Chicago's possession. The ruling of the field stands as called. The holding penalty will be enforced. It's New York's ball second down Chicago is charged with a timeout. So what Hockey League is ruling here is that before Tillman's knee was down the ball was coming out. Here's the whole essence of the play right now. This is about as close as it gets left knee down. Ball's coming out and he's going to rule that his knee wasn't down his knee is clearly down. The question is does he have possession. It appears he does but Snee is ripping it loose. And the penalty gets assessed from the previous spot. So after all that it's second and 19 and it's pouring apart from that there's not a lot going on here tonight. Right and that was a funny coverage because you know we said Charles Tillman was out there. He was on Plexico Burris but Burris ran and in and, and Tillman just let him go. And just to button it up the Bears lose a timeout because of the the challenge. Now Barber takes it to the 20 yard line tackled there by Lance Briggs. So in effect the Chicago Bears who've already turned the ball over twice tonight you'd have to think well you'd have to count that as a turnover as well because they had the ball after the Giants had turned it over doesn't go in there officially because of the holding call but they had an opportunity to take the ball away and they couldn't. 
You know, one thing Tom Coughlin was talking about the other day, and I think it's so true, is is when you have a guy like Tiki Barber, you don't want to get away from the run. And sometimes you start passing and you forget to go back to the run. And I think that was a good call on that second down to go back to the run. Now it's third and 12, and here's the run again. And that is big number 99, Tank Johnson, who comes in like his name for a three yard loss. Yeah, that's a tough part of that Bear defense. You know, Tommy Harris, Tank Johnson, and Brian Erlacher. And and not only are they, are they tough to block, but they do get penetration. And that's what hurts. You see, the, the Giants like to pull their linemen. And, and, and what the Bears do as they pull their linemen, they just get right in behind them, which creates penetration. And that creates a 40 yard field goal attempt by Feely, who missed from 33 and then made from 46. His one make was in this direction. And so is his second. 221 remaining in the first half. And the Giants extend their lead to 13 to 3. A week from tonight, raining as hard as it has all game long right now as the kickoff is fielded at the nine yard line by Rashid Davis. And he'll run Fieldy's kick back to the 25 yard line. And now Rex Grossman will try to get something going before the end. Of the first half, a giant defense, despite missing Strahan and Humanura and Short and Arrington and Emmons tonight. First three games, they give up 30.7 points per game. Then they had the bye week, and since then, look at that 10.4 tonight, only three points. And tonight, the Chicago Bears have a total of 46 yards in the first. Almost 28 minutes of the game. The ball is at the 26 yard line. Grossman dancing away, throws, and it's Bradley making the catch up to the 32 yard line. Martin Bradley, who'd been inactive last year, became a starter, but was injured, wound up missing the rest of the season, sprained his ankle earlier, but sees action here tonight with Barry and Gunn. Two minute warning at the Metal Lanes. Halftime show, Bob Chris Sterling in the bus. So you know everything that happened today. Philip Rivers, big day for San Diego. Brett Favre getting some advice from his coach. Coming up on the Toyota halftime report. Meanwhile, Chicago down by 10. Screen here. Thomas Jones. And Jones gets up to the 40-yard line. And that will be a first down. Broke out of a Will Demps tackle. Chicago has two timeouts left. I'm just so impressed with this giant defense in the first half. It just seems like they've really taken the fight to the Bears. But I feel that way about their offense too. That, that it doesn't look like the Bears on either side of the ball have a lot of emotion. They don't. And meanwhile, the Giants, despite those injuries, and then that we had an injury timeout here just for the moment. That was Antonio Pierce, who appears to be fine. But when the whistle sounds for an injury, you have to come out for at least one play. And there goes the middle linebacker, at least for this this next play, which will be a first and ten. And since we're inside two minutes, they will lose a timeout as well. And Antonio Pierce is the middle linebacker, and Tom Coughlin was saying that he's kind of the glue that right now holds this whole defense together. Jace Blackburn comes in. And the middle backer spot first down and 10 Grossman has to pull it down and that's the first time tonight he goes to the guy last night he was telling us is becoming his go to guy the tight end Desmond Clark and it's incomplete. I think I think the way the Giants are getting after him especially on first and second down then they create these long yardage situations and it just seems like the bear offense and Rex Grossman are really not made for long yardage situations. Mm -hmm. No that's becoming more and more evident. I think with Pierce it was not so much he was hurt as he had so much grass inside of that visor. So he came out clears that up. He comes back in second down and 10 now even though that visor is foggy. He can't see a thing. And there's a flag. He can rewipe it again. And he's trying to clean it out right now. But they say middle linebackers have to play on instinct when your because visor gets like that. You really have to. 76. Five yards penalty. Second down. That's John Tate, the left tackle. 
Yeah, now he has a clean. Now he can see. Okay. Second down. Let's go play. There was before. <laughs> he couldn't see out of that left eye at all. He couldn't even find the, the, the hook to put the strap on. Second down and 15. Grossman again, Chicago has not used the shotgun until tonight. And you've got a whistle again before the snap. Ball start offense number 69. So you've got the left tackle Tate first, then the right tackle Miller second, and it's second down and 20. You know, we were talking to Rex Grossman last night about the shotgun, and, and to be honest, he really doesn't like it. And I said, "Well, how did it get in?" And he said, "I think the lineman got it in. I think the lineman wanted it." Obviously, Fred Miller didn't want it when he jumped offside. I think Ron Turner, the offensive coordinator, and Lovey Smith put it in to maybe help Grossman see the coverage and pre-read the defense being back a little. This crowd right now in full throat because this defense has done a masterful job in this first half and Jones will go nowhere and John there's no question the story of this first half the giant defense everybody going oh no what are we going to do Strahan's gone human Muir is gone we don't know if Madison will play or not Arrington's gone for the season shorts out Emmons is out there's Michael Strahan and all they've done is limit the Chicago Bears to 57 total yards in 27 plays there is O.C. Human Europe. You know, we talked to Tom Coughlin the other day. It almost seems heartless, but I guess if you're a coach, you can only give so much love to your injured guys. You know, you gotta, he said, look, with all due respect, they're not playing. I have to deal with the guys who are well, playing. Well, you know, and you do, and I know that as a coach, you know, an injured player would say, well, when I get hurt, no one talks to me. Well, if you talk to the guy, all you say is, how you doing? How's your leg? You know, and then, you know, I'm tired of asking me how I am. So usually the things that you talk to a player about are the game. You know, okay, we have to do this. If they play off, we want to go here. You know, blitz, we want to slide and those things. And if the guy's not playing, you don't have anything to talk to him about. Third and 22, and they run a draw. And that's the biggest run of the night for Chicago. On a third and 22, it's a first down. He stays in bounds, does Jones, at the 46. So the clock keeps going. Chicago has two timeouts. That's a 26 yard gallop for the older brother of the Cowboys Julius Jones right and they just had to get something going to get him out of the sleepwalk and that was it and now Bradley makes the catch but he can't get out of bounds he's tackled at the 39 but the clock will stop on a flag. The illegal shift offense number 87 never got set. That's Musa Mohammed. So that wipes out the play. Yeah, and that should never happen. I mean, Musa Mohammed is out there on the right, and the play is going to be a draw play inside or to the left. And there's there's no reason for the wide receiver not to get set. There's no reason. So first and 15 now at the 49 yard line. Bears need something offensively before the half. Down by 10. Grossman's trips. Thrown, yep, trips to the right. Grossman's thrown for only 56 yards. He throws underneath for Bradley, and that wouldn't have gone anywhere to begin with as Antonio Pierce is there. You know, don't you feel, uh, you know, I've said this before, but the the giant defense is really bringing the lumber. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not only that they that they get a guy there or they cover a guy but but they're whacking them with everything they got. Well it's frightening for the opponents and of course is exhilarating for Giants fans is to think about how they're playing minus all those guys. Right and you know and Giants fans and I've said this for years really understand appreciate and applaud defense. And you hear that throaty New York roar right now on second and 15. And Grossman finds the open man, and that's Moussi Mohammed. And he has a first down at the 30 yard line. Tackled there by Butler. And now Chicago with two timeouts, and they will take the first of those two remaining. 20 yard gain. Yeah, that's why you always want to save your timeouts because you can still throw the ball into the middle of the field then. 
is Muhammad. He knows that he's going to get a zone in here, so he just comes in, comes under control, finds that hole, and Grossman finds him. Grossman throws a pretty good ball there. I mean, it, you know, you have to grip it, I think, a little tighter, you know, in, in, in the rain when it gets wet because you have to get a good spin on it, and Rex Grossman did on that pass. Chicago showing its first offensive life of the half. The third and 22 that run by Jones. If Chicago turns it around, of course, that's the, the play you'll go back to talk about as a turning point. They can only hope right now. First things first, though, as at least they try to get within seven. Field goal at worst. They're already in field goal range here. The ball is at the 29 yard line. You've got Grossman going deep down the left side, and Bradley got free and gets it for the touchdown. Bradley got behind Sam Madison. Madison lost him. Bradley got into the corner, and it's a 29 yard touchdown pass, the first career touchdown pass for Mark Bradley, their number two draft choice last year out of Oklahoma. Right, Sam Madison, number 22, the corner, came in with a a pull hamstring, and I think he may have pulled his hamstring on that mm -hmm. play. He was no match at all for Bradley. Madison was going to be a game time decision, slip field and all of that. Bradley got behind him, and Chicago tries to tack on the extra point, which Gold does. So that changes the entire complexion of the game. Chicago had done nothing until inside the two minute warning and that Jones 26 yard run culminated by this catch by Bradley as Madison pulls right. up Gimpy. Yeah you see him as he went to turn he was beaten anyway. I mean he was he was beaten but he pulls the hamstring after but here's what made it possible they've been having trouble with their protection but here they gave Rex Grossman time that he could step up he could look he even pumped once and then got that ball out there to Bradley could have let him out a little more but you see Sam Madison when he went to turn he couldn't run this was a third down and 22 they run a draw to Jones they had nothing going in the rushing department tonight until then and of course then you had a pass to Muhammad down to about the 30 yard line and Madison will go limping back into the locker room Bradley gets into the end zone and all of a sudden it's a three point game. That's why it's very difficult for a defensive back especially a corner to play this game with a hamstring when he's not 100 percent because there comes that point he has to react and then when his reaction is a quick reaction the thing is going to pull again. Thirty five ticks left Giants have one timeout. You got Derek Ward back to receive the Robbie Gold kick. Bears just went 74 yards in a minute and 46 seconds. Seven passes, one run. Field the 10 yard line. Then Ward loses the ball and make sure just to cover it up. And you have a flag coming in at the end. Two of them, in fact, at the 22 yard line. Isn't it something, Al? When you when you dominate and you have everything going defensively and you're playing well and you're doing all those things. You have to score points. You can't let that Absolute other team sit in there. Down, personal foul, unnecessary roughness by the kicking team. Number 44, 15-yard penalty, first down. Cameron Worrell, hopeful of recovering the fumble after the kickoff return was muffed, and he came in with a late hit at the end, and that's going to give the Giants an opportunity to at least try to work the ball into field goal position. Now both he and the official are smiling about it. But didn't you feel that the the Giants had dominated the whole half? I mean, no question. There and and that's 13 to three. I mean, 13 to 10. I mean, yeah, it looks like it's 13 to three. Have all the injuries, but the defense is is dominating. I mean, they look like the old Bears defense until that last series. First and ten at the 37 yard line. Draw Barber. He takes it up to the 43 yard line. Giants have one timeout. And the crowd is not appreciative of the fact they're just going to let the clock run out. The crowd felt at least the Giants should have attempted to get into field goal range, but Coughlin will settle for a three point halftime lead. The Giants on top by a score of 13 to 10. And now through the Lincoln Tunnel we go to Bob Costas in the Toyota halftime. Uh, willing to take advantage of the time they have now. 
what they do. They do it really well. They, they play fast with great energy and speed. So I, I think anything you get, you have to earn it. You know, we think we're the best. I'm sure I think they're the best. This is the first real, real challenge, I'll say, with a team that you know everybody expected to be the top team and for us to kind of prove our point that we're one of the top teams as well. We tend to gain momentum as the game goes on. We get stronger as the game goes on. We're relentless. We get 11 guys to the football every play. If you're not going to run, you're not going to play on this defense. That's what it comes down to. Sunday night football, another opportunity to show um, you know where we're at, show the league, and show America where we're at right now. Where we are right now, Giants 13, Chicago 10, Al Michaels, John Madden, Andrea Kramer. Story for the Giants coming into the game, the guys who are out, Toomer, the wide out, gone for the year, knee injury. Arrington, torn Achilles, Shorts missed four games. Tonight's the third game. Emmons has missed. Madison missed two, played the night, but he limped off at the end of the half. Eumannura and Strahan are both gone. Boris has come back. So it's a mess. But the Giants still, up until the last two minutes of the first half, dominant defensively, but the Bears get right back in the game. Three point differential at the half. And Rasheed Davis begins the second half by getting knocked out of bounds by the kicker. Jay Feely up near the 40 yard line. We check in with Andrea. Well, Lovey Smith told me that on the touchdown drive at the end of the half that it gave them momentum and allows them to stick with their game plan as opposed to having to make radical changes. He said it's a whole new ball game. It's even now. As for Tom Coughlin came out of the locker room aggressive, and that's how what he told his team they have to be aggressive running the ball, passing the ball. Starting left tackle Luke Pettigo, as we told you, fractured fibula. He's out. Cornerback Sam Madison, he re aggravated the hamstring. He too is out for the game. So Madison is gone here defensively, and the Bears begin this drive with Muhammad making the catch over the middle much as he did at the end of the first half on a big play and that's a first down at the 45 of the Giants 20 yards for the Bears. Yeah, I was just going to say that that was a good halftime adjustment is at the end of the second quarter they found that they could put Muhammad out there and there were some big holes in the middle of that giant defense that they could get Musa Muhammad into. At the 45 yard line first down now Jones that huge run and they say as I said the if the Bears win the game that was the game turner on that third and 22 picks up five some numbers now through the first half the Bears of course most of that offense coming on that last drive those two bear turnovers leading to all 10 or 10 of the 13 Giants points. And then last scoring drive, I think, as Lovey Smith told Andrea, that was a big momentum change for this Bear team. Second down and five now at the 40 yard line. Jones, and all of a sudden there are holes in the middle of that giant defense as he takes the ball to the 29 yard line, and that'll move the change again. First down. I think Lovey Smith talked about momentum. He also talked to this offensive line that. Let's get control of that defensive front and they're doing it right there. They get a, a lead and, and Jones just breaks right off the lead and goes to the backside. So he starts in there and then he just cuts right to the backside. At the 29 yard line. First down action up front. Fred Robbins. Coming across the line. Ed Hockley with the best biceps in officialdom. Not happy about having to do this in cold weather. First down. That's Robbins. Ed Hockley, of course, works out like a maniac. Loves to show off the biceps. Only wishes he could do a primetime game in a dome, though, in, in November. Yeah, he probably does. But I'll also say this about Ed Hockley. He's probably the best referee in the NFL. I mean, when you... I used to feel that way about Jim Tunney. That when he refereed the game, you felt it was under control. When Ed Hockley referees the game, you feel it's under control. Very much so. First and five at the 24 yard line. Grossman stepping away, and then that pass at the feet of Muhammad. He saw nothing downfield, and it will be second down and five. Grossman has that look, and you wonder where in the heck did that come from? How did that come? Out of my hand, and I got it halfway there. That's the old thing, you know that that pitch that you throw 45 feet. That's a pass that, that he threw 45 feet. <laughs> that wasn't even close to being a completion. So maybe you could put that in the category. Well, I was just throwing it away. 
Second down and five. Now Jones, uh-uh, tried to turn back, and Antonio Pierce was in his face. You know, Pierce had to make that play because you know they were, you know, you're talking about momentum, and they had it, and and they were starting to get that running game going. Thomas Jones was running, and here's Antonio Pierce here, and he's going to put a stop to it. And the thing is, is you can read something and wait for it, or you can read something and go to it right now. And that's what Antonio Pierce did. Third and six. If they don't get a yard on this play, you would be looking at about a 44 yard Robbie Gold field goal attempt to tie the game. Yeah, and Nickel in the first half, they blitz from this all the time. Here they are again. They come again. The pass is caught outside the 10, but then it's fumbled by Muhammad. And the Giants are all over it at the one yard line, and they recover. Corey Webster created the fumble. Muhammad looking for the end zone made the catch got inside the five puts it on the ground and Chicago has just turned the ball over for the third time in the game All right and Chicago made good adjustments because I said earlier they were getting in that nickel in the first half and blitzing the Bears couldn't handle it. now they handle it complete the pass and fumble it recovered by Debs. It's the game next Sunday night here on NBC. Moose and Mohammed, eight years in Carolina, second year with the Bears. His first fumble since joining Chicago. That's Corey Webster there. He has a man to man. He plays that poorly, knows that, so he has to do something about it, and he does. He strips it out of Mohammed's hands. Now the Giants at the two yard line. Will either be first and 11 or first and five. Cross start offense number 10. Pass it is to the goal. Still first down. First and 11. Bears have turned the ball over three times. Six turnovers last week. Six turnovers in Arizona. You know what happened on that one? Uh, Al Eli Manning, watch it. He'll start to pull out. Before the ball snap, you see him start to move mm -hmm. there. Yep. He dropped that right foot. That's just enough. So now backed up inside the one. First down and 11. And then they'll throw it out of the end zone and it is batted down. So that'll make it second down. And John, through the years, it's, it's just it's easier to throw it out of the end zone in this situation than to try to run it and risk the safety. Yeah, and you know that's that's the thing that you try and do, and you try and take that that play that you know they have two tight ends in there, they had Cybert in there, think that they have one on one on the outside, and Eli Manning is just looking there all the way, and he gets the ball knocked down. Second down and 11. Ian Scott was the guy who got his hand on it. Now you've got a fullback Finn in there. You got Shockey backing up. He'll go in motion. Barber is the tailback. Tiki will try to run it out of the end zone. And boy, that's why, you know, I mean, it's just uh, you're right. so much easier. The, the, the Bears think they have a safety, but he did get it beyond the goal line. But it is so, it's almost tougher to get it out of the end zone in that situation running as it is to get it into the end zone when you're inside the other team's one yard line. You know, and as good as Tiki Barber is, since he hurt his hand in this game, I don't feel that he's been running the same way. Mm -hmm. I mean, he looks like he's a little tentative going in there. He's not, he's really not whamming that thing in there. He usually, you know, I mean, he's not a big powerful runner anyway, but he makes, you know, strong and quick cuts. And I don't think since he hurt that thumb that he's been running the same way. If nothing else, they need at least a little bit of room if they're going to punt. Because if they throw here and it's incomplete, you got Fiegels 10 yards behind the center. And Manning will throw and he will not get that luxury unless there's a flag and there is none. It is Burris who gets contacted. As the ball got there by Tillman. So Tillman would what would have to be considered like perfect coverage now because there was no flag. Well he knows. Remember earlier we saw him getting up and then bailing out. This time he gets up on Burris and he presses him and he throws the timing off. And now you've got a short snap and a real fast kick. Yeah, you try and get the ball out to the five yard line because the punter is usually 15 yards behind the center. In this case, he's 10. He's right on the back line. The snap, Fiegel's kick, not bad. End over end, a liner. Hester fields it at the 40 yard line and then spins around, and the Giants' coverage is great. And that's big. 
Because if nothing else, if Hester had come straight forward, he probably would have gotten out of the 30 yard line. But he looked for the big, he looked for the big return there. The Bears ankle in training camp last year. He stayed healthy this year. His team down by three from the 43. It's Jones to the short side of the field. Wilson is right there with him to hurt him out of bounds after a gain of one. You know, I was saying earlier that this is a, a game of two young quarterbacks playing like two young quarterbacks. And I think that, you know, they have to get the running game going and start to get the ball to the tight end. I mean, I think both sides have to do that. Each quarterback connecting at 50 percent. Good snapping it to Grossman. Buying time. Sent all the way back. Gets it off to Jones. And Jones turns what would have been a pretty good sized loss with a flag down into, for the moment, about a five yard game. But yet William Joseph coming in and had his hand on Grossman as Rex was able to get rid of the ball. Isn't isn't it something how stupid can uh, turn to smart quickly? First of all, <laughs> roughing the passer. I mean, here's Rex Grossman. He's running backwards. He's doing everything that you shouldn't do. He throws the ball, and then he gets it away. I mean, here you say, okay, there's nothing there. You're getting pushed. Now just throw the ball away. Take your loss. He, he throws it instead of throwing it away. He throws it to Thomas Jones who makes a big play out of it and then he gets a roughing penalty. Yep. Tom Coughlin says what the heck is going on. And the end and net result is a first down for the Chicago Bears at the 22 yard line. Yeah, maybe Rex Grossman was trying to throw that away. He just completed it to Thomas Jones. Pump fake. Left corner flag down. You have McQuarters is the corner on that side covering Mohammed. Madison went off earlier at the end of the first half after Bradley had gotten free on the left side. Pass was thrown, illegal contact defense. Number 25 to five yard penalty from the previous spot. The pass, the pass was uncatchable because the illegal contact foul occurs before the pass. Oculi is so strong from lifting those weights he knocked his mic out. <laughs> but this, here's a replay. I mean, here's here's McQuarters here, and you're gonna see a bump right there. So that's the penalty part. I think Muhammad was trying to run an out and up on that because Grossman pumped to him in the out, and I think it was going to be an up. And we heard every other word, but the bottom line was it was an uncatchable ball, and thus no flag. And now it is Jones taking the ball to the 12 yard line in Chicago absolutely dormant on the ground for the first 20 minutes of the game all of a sudden they have found a running game. You know and again they found it right right before the end of the half on that on that draw play to Jones I think that was a thing that got him started because I feel that, that I felt at the time there wasn't much emotion in this team and that and that kind of gave them a certain life that they carried into this court play of the game for Chicago to this point there goes Jones and Jones gets into the end zone for a touchdown he followed a Jason McKee block the fullback led the way there's a flag down at the two yard line holding offense number 85 reprieve for the Giants that's the tight end John Gilmore holding and this is a short yardage to two tight ends and you're going to see it right here right in front of the umpire he not only held him he darn near choked him he grabbed him right around the neck and again you know sometimes you get away with that stuff but the umpire is a guy right behind the defensive line and Gilmore did it right in front of him. Couldn't miss that one. Will Dents was the victim. Gilmore comes off the field. It is second down now. At the 14 yard line. He 
second and seven. This is Jones taking it to the 10 yard line. Upcoming is a third and three. Reggie Torbor makes the stop. Yeah, this bear offensive line is, is doing a heck of a lot better job at the end of the second quarter here into the third quarter. You know, in the, uh, for most of the first half, that giant front really dominated this bear front. And I feel that there's been a reversal. That the that the bear offensive line is now handling this giant defense. Bears have now outrushed the Giants, 57 to 55. They spread it out here. Giants in the nickel, third down and three for Chicago from the 10. And Grossman throws. That's a first down and a touchdown. Musin Muhammad gets into the end zone. He fumbled earlier at the two. They got the ball back after pinning the Giants deep and cash in off the short field for their first lead of the game. You know when you get down this close you, you have to play tighter. I think the Giants just gave Muhammad way too much room here and, and he was able just to run up there turn around catch a ball and go into the end zone. I mean you have to get up tight on him. You have to bump him. You have to reroute him. You have to do something, but you can't let him do that. Corey Webster was the man who was on him. Gold's extra point is good. So the Giants, not that long ago, were leading by 10. And now it's the Bears by four, with 8.20 to play in the third. It was 50 at the start of the game, now into the upper 40s. Bears have the lead. Robbie Gold's kick into the arms of Derek Ward at the four yard line. He gets out to the 39 yard line. So the Giants will play from behind for the first time in the game. Manning going back to work. Chicago up 17 to 13. Things money can't buy for everything else. There's MasterCard. John, you take the vegetables, I'll take the pucks. And the chicken. That was pretty good. Little Italy. I may I may take the vegetables and arm wrestling for the other stuff too. From the 29 Barber puts the ball on the ground and recovers it and he has just not since he had that thumb wrap in the same guy. He had 40 yards on his first three carries. He now has 14 yards on his last 11 carries and uncharacteristically put that one on the ground. Yeah, and you wouldn't think that a, that a, a, a thumb injury would bother you like that but. He just he's just not running. I mean, he just doesn't look like the same guy. And the and I think I think that they have to do something about that. I mean, the the Giants have to do two things. I think one they have to get What's the ball to Shockey, and two they have to be able to run. Haven't even thrown to Shockey tonight. Second and ten, and there's a flag. Manning loses the ball. The Bears are going to wind up with it. Alex Brown creates the fumble, but it all depends on the penalty. Alex Brown over the years has kind of raved havoc, raised havoc with the Giants. Last time these two teams met in 2004, Brown had four sacks of Kurt Warner. Now for the moment, you've got Chicago coming up with the ball. But what about the penalty? Remember Bob Whitfield is the left tackle there, and he's taking Luke Pettigrew's place. And you see that. That Whitfield gets up there. In fact, he had his arm around his neck, and he still beat him. And the hold was on Whitfield, but Gunlayet recovered it, and so a turnover for the Giants. They're second. I mean, the thing about Alex Brown on that play is—is is he just kept working? You know, here Whitfield has him around the neck, but he just lowered that shoulder and just kept going to get the Eli Manning at the 21 yard line. A sea change in this game from inside two minutes of the first half on Jones to the outside and he gets ridden out of bounds and then he shoves Webster down after they're both out of bounds. Corey Corey Webster's had a tough time over there uh, first of all with Musa Muhammad and then then on the run and I think that I mean, if I were the Bears, I think I would I would get Muhammad out there on that right side and go back to go, to go back on Corey Webster because he's kind of playing a no man's land. I mean, he's not up there and pressing, and he's not way back. He's kind of in between where you can do just about anything to him. Muhammad beat him for his touchdown. 
to give Chicago the lead. Under seven to go in the third. Second down and eight from the 19 yard line. Four man rush. Grossman gets it over to Bradley and he gets taken down by McWhorters about a yard and a half short of the first down. Third and two we'll call it coming up for Chicago. You know Mark Bradley was going to be the deep guy you know we, we talked about Bernard Barry and then and how they lost him and then they got Mark Bradley back and they thought that you know if they needed that big pass that deep pass it he would be that guy now you know they don't need that kind of pass right here they just need a control pass to pick up the first down about a five yard here crowd exhorting and imploring the Giants to hold into a field goal attempt here Jones takes the toss on third and two he gets the first down and he gets to the two yard line so Thomas Jones completely held in check in the first half up until that huge run on the third and 22 that has turned the game around first and goal here you know, I was talking to Ron Turner the offensive coordinator last night about this and he said that you know that you have to stay with the run he said that, you know sometimes you start passing and you forget about the run I thought maybe they did a little of that in the first half but they've come back now I mean they got it at the end of the half they got that draw and now they have good mixture of run and pass. Got to John Tate the left tackle who smothered Will Demps on the play. The fake to Jones Grossman to the end zone touchdown to Desmond Clark. We talked about him in the first half as his new go to guy. Well that's the first time in the game he's gone to him. Hey that was a good play action pass. I was impressed with Rex Grossman here. Watch how quickly he comes out of the play fake. You see how he just makes it and then he's going to come back here and he straightens up and he gets that ball to Desmond Clark. Because you can't keep your head turned away from the defense and your and your receiver. So you have to fake that ball and then get your head snapped around. Diane Stadium is silent. Gold's extra point is good. The Chicago Bears have run up 21 unanswered points. Five and a half left in the third. Bears by 11. Chicago Bears tonight no running game at all a half a yard per tote for their first 10 rushes and then Jones with the game turning play on that third and 22 to lead the way to the Chicago touchdown before the half they've added two scores here in the second half and all of a sudden Chicago is up by 11. And now you know it's been a, it's been a tough night for Eli Manning here and with that score it's going to be even tougher because the Bears are going to come heavy pass rush now. Gold's kick. Derek Ward ran a kick back for the Giants against Washington for a touchdown in 04. Up to the 31 yard line. The score was 13 to 3 near the end of the first half. Third and 22 the Giants defense had been dominant. Then you had this draw. This inside give to Thomas Jones that was a 26 yard Harry Mohammed caught a pass over the middle Madison then got lame covering with that hamstring pull on the coverage of Bradley who got free for the touchdown it was a three point game at the half two touchdowns here in the second half and the Giants with an uphill battle now down by 11 Manning throws and throws it behind David Tyree you know John we were talking about Manning you and I over the past couple of days and you know how he's progressed and with all this stuff going on with the Giants this year you know Barbara talking to Barbara retiring and having a phenomenal year and you know all of the injuries you forgot about Eli and it looked like he was coming along but now tonight well yeah, it's a he, different story and and he really had been coming along too I mean I think you know he misses Amani Toomer a little he lost his left tackle I'm surprised that he hasn't gotten the ball to shock me let me give it to Barber who just hasn't been the same since he had that hand wrap and you've got Erlocker right there for the stop. You know, I was I was watching practice the other day, Alan, and Jeremy Shockey was catching about half the footballs, and he he practices as hard as any guy I've ever seen. And I thought I thought Shockey was going to have a big game because in practice he had a big practice, and, and I don't think he's had a ball thrown to him, nope. has he? Nope. He's in the slot to the left. Along with Tyree, they send Tyree back into the backfield now. Manning looking that way now. Manning throwing, and sooner or later, you knew it was going to happen. He's tackled by Erlocker, and that will be a first down. Jockey 
trying to fire up the Giants and the fans as well here. Well, I think he's trying to fire up the coaches too. I mean, I mean, he plays hard. You know, he's not one-dimensional. He's just not a pass receiver. He's a blocker, and that's what he's been doing. But you know, he's been working this whole time, you know, and he's been trying to hit someone and doing all those things. And you know, it's just a matter of time. And sometimes, as a coach, it's your responsibility too. If a guy hasn't gotten the ball, you have to find something to get him open to get him a ball. On the 46-yard line. Now Barber cuts back, and there goes Tiki. Inside the 30, inside the 20, inside the 10, first and goal at the six-yard line. Tiki Barber with his longest run of the season, 46 yards. Those are the two things the Giants had to do, and they did them back-to-back. -back. They had to get the ball to Shockey, and they had to get the running game to Tiki Barber going. They got the ball to Shockey, and boom, here comes Tiki Barber. They get him out of bounds at the eight. That's a hundred yards tonight for Tiki Barber. Look at Jeremy Shockey block. He is a powerful guy. I mean, he he plays the game like a kid would play it in the park. Believe me. Now Brandon Jacobs is in the tailback. Shockey in motion. They give it to the big bull. Touchdown Giants. Boy, did they make that look easy. Jacobs, who normally scores from the one or the two, maybe the three, that's his longest touchdown run. And he gets into the end zone with some frequency, his fifth rushing score of the year. Well, you know, we talk about what got the Chicago Bears going. Well, it was Jeremy Shockey. I think, you know, in his pass catch, uh, you know, got the Giants going. And then, of course, followed by Tiki Barber. And then they bring in Brandon Jacobs, and he just runs it in. Bring Finn as the fullback as well. He threw the block that sprung him, feeling now for the extra point. Took the Giants two minutes and nine seconds. Five plays. Right back in the game. 326 remaining, third quarter, 24-20 Chicago. You know, good blocking on that right side. Watch a right tackle here. Kareem McKenzie block here, and then Snee is going to pull. See here comes here comes McKenzie right there the right tackle he comes down Chris Snee pulls around kicks out the force man and no one touches Brandon Jacobs Finn took care of Briggs as well 20 on 55. I don't know you know there's not a lot of guys anxious to tackle that guy if you notice that I'm watching on film and everyone just throws their body at his ankles he's as big as Erwacher right. But Tiki got that thing started, well, or, or Shockey got it started, and then, you know, they needed a run. They had to stay with the run, but you just can't run it in there, you know, at the line of scrimmage. You have to break one. And since he hurt his thumb, I didn't think he was the same guy. But on that play, he became that guy again before he hurt the thumb. Shockey just gave the Giants their own whiff of oxygen. Feely to kick off, Rasheed Davis back to receive. Davis came out of the Arena Football League and he gets banged down to the 22. And special teams gives the crowd a chance to roar. That's Chris Claiborne making the tackle. Monday night here on NBC, all new deal or no deal. The Falls big hit, Heroes. And John Goodman will be on Studio 60. That's tomorrow night right here on NBC. You know, watching these two teams is like watching a good fight, isn't it? This is great, yeah. One guy gets the other, and then the other comes back and gets in. Right. Bears ready to deliver the knockout blow back from the Giants, and that pass is incomplete. Yeah, the Giants were, you know, ahead on points through like the first four rounds. You know, maybe they won every round. Yeah. And then Dominated. the Bears came back and, you know, won the fifth round before yeah. halftime, and, and then, you know, almost knocked the Giants out, and then the Giants respond. Pretty good. And we still got about two or three rounds. These, these are the old days. This isn't a 12 round now. We're going 15 rounds in this one. Winner of this game will be the number one seed at the end of this week in the NFC. Giants and the Bears will be tied at 7 and 2, but the Giants would have the head to head win. And the crowd still in full throw right now as Will Demps gives them another reason to roar. Yeah, and that's a big thing that you have to do. You know, we talk about dominant players now. I think a lot of them 
are coming from that safety position. You know, they, you know we know about the, the, the front four and the three linebackers, but that safety is making a lot of plays in the backfield now. They know how to get loud here, Al, for their defense. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll guarantee you that. Third down, 13 at the 20 yard line. Two and a half remaining in the quarter. Grossman's pass caught by Muhammad. And Muhammad should have enough for the first down. Corey Webster was the guy who had a chance to tackle him. Well short of it, but Muhammad got by him. Down the sideline he goes. And it appears to be a first down. Ohio is going to measure. Yeah, it looks like Corey Webster is going for the interception here. And you wonder, how does Rex Grossman get that ball in there? I mean, Corey Webster was right on Muhammad. And he got that ball where Corey Webster couldn't get it. And only Muhammad could get it. That was a heck of a throw. And get it and not only stay in bounds, but stay in bounds and pick up the first down. As you can see, he just does get there to the 33 yard line. Look at that throw. I mean, he's, he's putting it right on his outside number, where again, where Corey Webster couldn't get it, but Muhammad could. I think Rex Grossman is a guy you just have to stay with and live with. I think I think you're exactly right. Grossman throws over the middle, caught by Rasheed Davis, and he takes it down to the 41. Remember we saw him on that Sunday night against Seattle, and we thought it was like a, a coming of age, and he looked tremendous. And then he throws in a couple of clunkers against Arizona and Miami. Didn't look good tonight until the third quarter here. Right, right, and that's here. I. I think he sees something in Corey Webster. It seems like that he's going to the guy who Corey Webster is covering now. We saw him on Muhammad, and, and then we see Corey Webster here on Rasheed Davis, and Rex Grossman goes right to him. Jones plugging forward to the 36 yard line, burrows his way for a gain of five as we'll tick down to the final minute. Of the third quarter. Nothing tonight for Chicago. Dormant offense, and then all of a sudden, three touchdowns, last five drives, and this one in progress. Second and five. Jones. Defense stiffens to the 35. So when we begin the fourth quarter, the Chicago Bears will have a third down and four at the Giant 34 yard line. Giants led 13 10 at the half, and Chicago outscores New York 14 7 in the third. So at the end of 45 minutes, the Chicago Bears 24 and the New York Giants 20. And NBC Sunday Night Football resumes. Average, terrible, 22. Manning's average, terrific, 108. But what does tonight bring? Al Michaels, John Madden, Andrea Kramer. We start the fourth quarter, third down and four. For Chicago and a whistle before the snap. Ball start offense number 69. Five yard penalty, third down. Fred Miller makes it a third down and nine now. Send Bradley out to the left. We've got Mohammed and Rashid Davis both going to the right. Tight end Clark slotted to the right. After Miller's third false start penalty, the sack of Grossman. Fred Robbins comes right up the middle. Yeah, that was the same. Tank. I was going to say that was the same thing they did in the in the first half. What they did is they as they got in nickel and they blitzed the safety 
They, bleat, they, 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 they brought the safety from that weak side, and then you're going to see Robbins go over Brown. But see, here comes the safety back here, and here comes Robbins straight up the middle. But as they start to slide out, that let him get to the outside. Nine-yard loss on the sack. They blitz Dents as well. Robbins knocks him down. The kick by Maynard is a short one, and is fair caught by Chad Morton at the 21 yard line. So 37 seconds into the fourth quarter. Giants have the ball down by four start this drive from their own 21 yard line. Barber. Is dragged down from behind by Briggs after a gain of five it'll be second down and five and Tiki tonight has carried 17 times for 105 yards. And they have they have plenty of time here and I I think the Tiki has to be the number one thing they do the running game. Now you've got a flag. It might be a horse First collar here. Foul, defense horse collar. First down. And they sneak that flag in there at the end and Lance Briggs is caught. Now did he get inside the pad is the question. All he has to do is get inside the jersey I think. I don't think he got inside of anything. No. No, he didn't. Ooh. No, he just had his hand on the shoulder. Right. No, that's that's not a horse collar. No, nope, not even close. No. That's not a pony collar. That's nothing. No, but it was a late call and very. I think someone was talked into something that was a phantom call. And that's caught by Plexigo Burris, who had a hot start tonight, but hasn't been much involved in the action of late. His fourth grab of the night. Giants have excelled in the fourth quarter and overtime. That overtime win against Philadelphia, capping a miracle win in week two. But that's what I was I was just starting to say. I think that they have to stay with the running game. They have to stay with Tiki, but they can't just do that. I think they still have to, you know, go to Shockey, who's not in there on this play, and they, you know, have to go to Burris the way they did early because what was there early with Plexico Burris is still there for the Giants. Balance. Rich Seibert, the, the guard, number 69, is in now as a tight end. Formation they've used with frequency tonight. Ball at the 49 yard line. Barber behind Finn. Cuts off a nice block by his fullback and takes it to the 41 yard line for a gain of eight. You know, that's what they do is they put Seibert in there. It's an extra offensive lineman. And then they could run. Then they get the lead to that side. Plus, you have a guard, a tackle, another guard, and then a fullback leading. That is pretty good power to the right side. See, Seibert blocks down, tackle blocks out, Finn leads. That, again, is good power right. Now you have Seibert on the left side, side of a slot. Second and two, the ball at the 41 yard line. Earl Locker blitzing, he gets picked up. Manning throws, and the catch is made inbounds. Yes. Line judge coming over to say that David Tyree was able to get both feet in at the 28 yard line. I think Eli Manning is trying to get him up there to the line of scrimmage and go no huddle. He kind of feels he has this bare defense on their heels and he wants to keep them there. And also he doesn't want any opportunity to have a look upstairs by the assistant coaches for a challenge but it's too late. I think he felt that it was close enough. When there's so much hesitation on the part of the guy making the call, as the case was there with the line judge. Chicago's challenging the ruling of the complete pass on the sideline. Got the ball. Well, he's sweeping. He's got the left foot down. Does he have possession? Yeah. And right. then he's, he's trying to sweep that right foot in. Keep it in. We'll see. The question is. Both feet were inbounds with possession of the ball. The ruling on the field. Chicago is charged with their first time out. 
before I tell you the question that you already have the answer he did a tremendous job did Tyree one foot definitely in and then he's able to drag the other foot as he gains possession of it you'll see it here along the sideline he clearly has the left foot down and then he's able to keep the right foot on the ground before the right knee touches the boundary with possession of it and what? Chicago loses the challenge they are now out of challenges Lovey Smith cannot challenge anything else and he loses a timeout he has two remaining you know and Tyree really didn't run a good pattern I mean he made a good catch and and did well keeping both feet in but he didn't give he didn't give Manning enough room to the sideline he ran that pattern too close to the sideline Shockey goes in motion on first down from the 29 yard line Erlacher is blitzing the double team him the ball is loose it is Alex Brown who comes charging in and then the ball winds up out of bounds so Brown creates the fumble and then the Giants get a monster break before Chicago can recover it it goes out of bounds and that's going to be Alex Brown on Bob Whitfield again and again just hustle you see him here coming from the back side he gets that left arm under and then two or three steps and he's right on Eli Manning where well, this guy has big games against the Giants. Well Pettigrew you got hurt broken fibula Whitfield in there for him injuries continue to mount for the Giants second down and 24 and you might have a ch a Coughlin challenge for the arm coming forward. No no you've got what you have here is a clock. Please reset situation. the clock to 1225. 1225. Yeah, you know, this is a tough situation now. He knows he's going to get a big pass rush, and you can see, you know, he only has one guy in the backfield, and that's Tiki Barber offset to the right. So it's not going to be a run type play. I could see him. Here's Tiki Barber here offset. So it's either going to be a draw to him or a screen to him if they do anything to Tiki. Second down and four, and it's a draw. And Tiki escapes, turns no gain into a gain of about uh, nine yards. And the big thing that really did it get it, it got him in field goal position. I mean, it's the type of thing that you know may not be a big thing, but there's nothing there on the right. He comes back to the left, and they're very, very close to field goal position. It is third down and 15. I know they're down by four but a field goal here wouldn't be bad for the Giants Manning rolling throwing and that's incomplete well now the decision is going to be if, if you try if you want to attempt a field goal it's Giants Stadium you're looking at about a 51 yard field goal and of course the big downside to that is if you miss it you give the Bears the ball back. At about the 41 yard line. Yeah, I think they fouled up on that third down play. I don't think that they had to go for a first down. I would have gone for about seven or eight yards and been in a lot better field goal position than they are now. In fact, it's going to be a 52 yard attempt into the notorious swirling winds of Giants Stadium. If he misses it, the Bears will get the ball at their own 42. Eagles to put it down. Feely's kick pressure kick not even close and now Hester after hesitating he's going to run it out and Hester is going to run it out past the 40 in the Giants territory he is going to go all the way touchdown Chicago and no flags but now there is a flag all the way across the field at the 50 yard line. So the Bears had run out onto the field. The penalty marker came out late. The penalty is about 30 yards away from where any of the action was. And that's a tough thing with that with kicking that field goal because you know it can be blocked if you don't make it they're going to get good field position or it can be returned as it was. If it stands it would equal the longest play in the history of the league. It would be 108 yards. After the touchdown, personal foul, 
unnecessary roughness by the Giants, number 65. That clearly will be a for the kickoff. Touchdown. What, what a deep by Hester. I mean, the kick is short. He stands there as if, okay, that's it. I'm going to take a knee. He waits to see what develops. There he is. Nothing. A little fake. And the next thing you know, it's a play that equals the longest play in the history of the National Football League. Heck of a block. Great block. Down the sideline he goes on a missed 52-yard attempt. Did you think that he made that first move on purpose? I mean, that he was trying to draw him low on the slate? You know, I don't, you don't know with him. This, no, kid, I know you this don't. kid was a phenomenal run back guy in college. One of the reasons they drafted him, he's run back two punts, 80 or more yards. He's also fumbled some kicks. But right now, he has turned this into an 11 point advantage. A rookie drafted in the second round out of Miami. He returned two kickoffs and four punts for touchdowns there. A 108 yard missed field goal return. You know the irony here? Two guys going back on the plane to Chicago tonight will share the National Football League record for the longest play because Nate Baxter, his teammate, holds the record or held the record alone until now at 108 with a missed field goal attempt. Run back against the 49ers last year. Derek Ward runs this kick back to the 25 yard line. Uh, uh, an optical, Fred Gudelli, our producer, telling us there's an optical tracking system which can be done through the camera lens. And I don't understand any of this stuff, but all I know is that this is officially now tracked at 108.4. It sounds like some easy listening on your FM dial, but 108.4 yards for Hester there. Goes into the books as a 108 yard run back, tying the mark set by his teammate Vasher in a similar situation against San Francisco on a missed field goal. And that pass is incomplete, intended for David Tyree. You know, in coaching terms, that was called a no no go go. Mm -hmm. Because you're standing there in the sidelines, you see it, and you see the guy. Standing there, and then you see him start to run. You go, no, no, and then he gets up to the 30, the 40, the 50. Yeah. You say, go, go. <laughs> well, I mean, Hester, go, 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 go. Hester has been. Look at Lovey right there. He's going, go, go. He, after he had said, no, no. Hester had, has been an adventure all season long. Will he run one back? Will he muff one as he did the fumble one last week leading to a Miami score? And that is intercepted by Chris Harris. And the safety brings that ball back down to the 31 yard line. So everything coming apart for the Giants now. And John, you got to hold that field goal attempt up to a candle. In a situation where they attempt a 52 yard field goal, you think the worst thing that happens, now you have a flag coming in at the end of the play. Is that Chicago gets the ball at the 42, and then of course you have the disaster of the run back against you. But now yeah. the penalty. I even hold the candle up to the play before that on third down. I thought they should have just worried about you know first getting six, seven, eight yards to get in a better field goal position. And then I hold the candle up now. I mean, I mean they had plenty of time. There you don't was have one to force. Foul that was you don't have to play. Play. Illegal formation by the offense number 69 was off the line of scrimmage. That penalty was declined after the interception and after the the, uh, the ball was dead. It was an unsportsmanlike conduct demonstration by Chicago. That's a 15-yard penalty that will be enforced from the dead ball spot. Chicago keeps the ball. Keeps the ball, but instead of having the ball at uh, about the 30. One yard line, they'll have it at the 46. But I think the Giants, you know, down by 11 with, you know, 11 minutes. I mean, that was still plenty of time. I mean, sure. you didn't, you didn't have to force anything. You didn't have to bend it. You could stay with your run. You could stay with your tight end. You could stay with Bert. You could stay with the stuff you had. But I think that they got a little flustered there. At the 46 yard line. Now Jones. Thomas Jones to the 45 yard line. Thomas Jones has now packed the ball 22 times tonight for 85 yards. Boy, for Chicago, those first 28 minutes, you can just picture Bears fans going, oh man, you know, last week, tonight, what's going on? Now, a whole other story. 
And you know, sometimes it, you know it takes a little while. I mean, you have a, a game plan. You think they're going to do something. When they don't, then you have to make adjustments, and you get a feel, and and you can go from there. And then second and nine, deep pass. That's caught by Bradley, and it will be first and goal as Bradley gets between Wilson and Webster, and Grossman all of a sudden has thrown for 246 yards. Well, I think when he started doing that, he found number 23, Corey Webster. And he's just put guys on him and gone to work on him. I mean, Webster is off, and then he's turning with everything. And and a corner playing without confidence is a guy in big, big trouble. And that's Corey Webster right now. At the seven. Gain of two. The attrition finally took its toll on the giant defense, which was the story of the game. For the first 28 minutes tonight, they look great. All of the injuries, they weren't missing anybody, and all of a sudden, it's come home to roost. And in addition to the guys already missing, Sam Madison went out of the game at the end of the first half. Well, you know, instead of letting them be over there in the sideline and, and getting rest for the next series, you have a turnover and, and bang their right back in there again. I see Musin Muhammad is uh, is going in the in the locker room for the Bears. Here's Jones on second and goal. He'll take it to close to the one yard line. And there goes Muhammad. Good injury to to check on him. Muhammad tonight has caught seven passes for 123 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, and Thomas Jones, we look at him. He's the guy that got this Bear team started tonight and. I think as a result of that we really haven't seen much of Cedric Benson have we? No. This is this has kind of been Thomas Jones's game. Benson's carried the ball three times. Jones has carried the ball 24 times. Third and goal the Bears are going to take a timeout. 825 left. His post game report comes up after the game. We'll name the rock star of the game. Picture going up on the top of the GE building in the Rockefeller Center. Interviews highlights. Top of the rock. 825 remaining in the fourth quarter. Bill Murray has come in off the golf course. <laughs> or somewhere. Yeah. Looks like he just got off a sailboat. Staten Island Ferry. In the Netherlands. Third down and goal after the timeout for Chicago from the two. And Jones. Into the end zone goes Thomas Jones for a touchdown. And that's an in your face jump shot. Of course, the Giants have made that their little mini trademark after their sacks. But now Thomas Jones goes in and he puts one in from three point land. Yeah, every six point doing land. It. I mean, we've had we've had way too many jump shots. Tonight. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah. yeah they, OK, that's enough of that. that. That was good for a while. Let's come up with something different. But again, you know, we, we just showed that top of the rock, and I, I kind of think that maybe that guy with the jump shot has to be up there tonight, huh? You know, sometimes we, we like, you know, the body of work to determine it, and Jones's body of work tonight has been pretty good. But the third and 22 is the ball game. He gained 26 yards, and it's the first time, it's the first time there has been a first down on a running play of third and 20 or more in the NFL since 1999. And you know you felt until that point that you know that the Bears both on offense and defense were were kind of sleepwalking. They didn't look like they had a lot of emotion and the Giants were playing with a lot of emotion and then Jones made that run and then everything flip flop from that point. Sure. And we were we were talking about it at the time when this happened. I mean you, you figure the pass they're going to the locker room down by 10. Jones had done nothing until then. They followed that up with a pass to Muhammad over the middle. It took him inside the 30. And then Madison came up lame trying to cover Bradley, and he got free, caught a Grossman touchdown pass. And instead of it being 13-3, it was 13-10. And then Chicago scored two quick touchdowns in the third. Giants able to rally, but then that Hester. 108-yard missed field goal return was the killer. Well, and then you know you always talk about the NFL being a passing game and quarterbacks and all that, and it is. But having said that, you have to be able to run the ball and stop the run. And both of these teams 
are running teams or to be successful they have to be able to run the ball. Goal. Sends it to the five yard line. And Eric Ward will bring it back out to the 20 yard line. We go to Andrea. Devin Hester he uh, attempt when they had that field goal attempt when you have one that long the Bears put Hester back there as though it's a punt return opportunity and what he did was he actually hesitated on purpose to try to draw the defenders in obviously he was successful after the 108 yard return. That was a good bluff. Yeah, well, I mean, you know I mean, what if he did that that was that was really a good bluff because he made a believer out of everyone. Remember we saw Chris McAllister do that. In a Baltimore Denver Monday night game right, about one, yeah. four years ago. Didn't hesitate as long as Hester did. And at that time, that was the longest play in NFL history. Here goes Barber. And Barber is good for 19 before Tommy Harris knocks him down from behind. You know, that does throw the, the timing of the guys coming down. And again, the guys coming down, you know, weren't a kickoff coverage team. The guys running down were the field goal blocking team. Manning caught by Tyree up to the 49 yard line. And that's enough for a first down. Seven and a half to go in regulation. And you know, when you're down by one, you have a, a, a two minute offense, down by two. Four minute offense, and then down by more than two, you have an eight minute offense, and that's what the Giants are in now. You know, it's a three possession game, and you got Erlacher coming in, forcing that errant throw. Again, going back to the missed field goal attempt. And the Giants, well, they figure, all right, missed field goal. Hester will take a knee. All of a sudden, he comes out of the end zone. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, you don't want to play poker against that guy. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> he, he's, he's say, a, I know what he got. You don't know anything. He's he's all in on every hand. <laughs> right. Tiki Barber just came out. He was holding his hand again. And that pass over the middle is incomplete. Shocky, the intended receiver. So Only, there, oh boy. So the Giants. I mean, they've lost Pettigrew tonight. That's. That's about as bad a scene as you know any giant fan can look at right now. Barber hurting. Madison re-injured. Strahan is out. Human Ure is out. Tuck is out. Arrington is out for the season. Mm. Third and ten at the 48. Manning avoids the sack for the moment. Then he just Flips it away out of the side of his hand. And he can do that because he was outside the tackle box. So that's right. no intentional grounding, right? He's outside the tackle box and he's he's throwing the ball up beyond or to the line of scrimmage. Tom um, Coughlin's thinking, well, we had one and then we kind of let it get away, didn't we? Well, we had one and we were going to be the number one seed in the NFC, and now we're going to be two games back of the number one seed in the NFC, and we'll lose the head to head tiebreaker with them if they wind up with the same record. You know, and at some point, I think everyone has to start giving Chicago credit. You know, they always had to, yeah, but well, yeah, they're undefeated, and then they finally yeah. lose one, but they didn't have a tough schedule. They have all this. They play the teams that are on their yeah. schedule. And, and this was a, a team on their schedule that was one of their tough games. And that kick is out of bounds. Well, you know, John, everybody gets to do enough blabbing, either in print or in, on the air, as we can tell you about the flex game next week. San Diego against Denver. Chargers with a huge win today. Denver knocked off Oakland. Battle for the top spot in the AFC West. Look at what the teams did today. Big day for Tomlinson, Rivers as well, Jake Plummer leading Denver from behind. But in the world of of blabbing and blogging, I mean, all of a sudden Chicago, oh, they're going to be undefeated. Now they stink. Well, now all of a sudden they're good again. Right. You know, in other words, what have you done for me in the last 10 minutes? Are you blabbing or <laughs> blogging? <laughs> it's, it's just a bunch of blather. 
Thomas Jones up to the six. Andrea, are you blathering or blogging tonight? What are you doing? Well, I was actually talking to Marty Schottenheimer <laughs> after the Charger game, that wild, that wild win. I asked him, what do you tell your team when you're down 21 at the half? He said, I don't care what the final score is or what the outcome is. Just go out and win the second half. Well, they outscored the Bengals 42 to 13 to end up winning the game 49 to 41. But Schottenheimer said, We'll get off the thrill of this really quickly because we have to go into Denver next week where by the way he has a three and 13 career record with the four teams has been it's really been his personal house of horrors. Biggest comeback in terms of points in Marty Schottenheimer's long career Cleveland Kansas City and now San Diego and also a stop in Washington along the way. Meanwhile Jones. A timeout taken here by the Giants as they have to conserve whatever remains on the clock well in advance of the two minute warning Jones has now gained 101 yards on the ground. Some of the things that have happened tonight Manning with two interceptions Rex Grossman real poor start but then all of a sudden he came alive and he came alive mainly because of Jones's run and Thomas right now has gone up and over the hundred yard mark and of course a play that equaled the longest in the history of the National Football League Hester's missed field goal return. Giants after taking a timeout. Jones on a third and short will pick up the first down as he takes it out to the 15 yard line. OK can I blab now. Go ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. Plenty of blabbing time for us. Well remaining. you might not want me to blab. Yeah. After you hear what I blab about. Oh. <laughs> what are you blabbing about now. Today's your birthday. Oh. And happy yes, birthday. Well thank you John. You're <laughs> such a great partner. I want you to share with me. My favorite delicacy a black and white cookie which oh, has been you, delivered to the booth. You which, can't beat that. No, you can't beat the black and white. If you're in New York you have to have a black and white cookie. So that's that's the equivalent of your birthday cake. That's the equivalent of the birthday cake and I want you to have part part black and part white here. Yeah, I'll take it. But happy birthday anyway. Well, thank you John. You know I never get to wish you a birthday because it's in April. No I know it. Which is good. That's a good thing. <laughs> and it's also I think it's to build. Wilson's birthday the the Giants safety Jabril and I will be going out clubbing after the game. I haven't met Jabril yet but we're going to go out clubbing tonight. Yeah Jabril probably would if he were on the the <laughs> other end of 38 to 20. That is true. Being on the end the 20 end I don't think you do much clubbing. Now the Giants are just going to have to think about their next game and that will be at Jacksonville a week from tomorrow night so Tom Coughlin will go back to his old stopping grounds. Meanwhile the Bears when well, the Giants will be on the road next week and the Bears come right back here to face the Jets so they can leave some stuff in the locker room if they wish. Just make sure that you lock the door. Second and five from the 19. You know it's funny this stadium has been the home of the Giants since the mid 70s opened in 76. The Jets came in in the early 80s. The Bears, the Bears have only played here six times in three decades, and now they come in tonight. <laughs> they come in next Sunday. Yeah, isn't isn't that something the way the schedule works? Yeah. And you know the, I mean, you'd think the Bears and the Giants would play darn near every year. I mean, it's like Indianapolis and the Patriots seem to play every year in New England. How does that happen? Right. And then how do the Bears not come here? And then come here twice in two weeks. It's weird. Yeah, remember Green Bay would play Dallas all the time. San Francisco in would want to play in yeah. Dallas all yeah. the time. Look at those people. It's not that cold. No, but I mean, well, it's it's, it's wet. I mean, it's it's damp and and cold. But they're just they're just going to get their money's worth. They're going to get all of this. Money. Thomas Jones. And Thomas Jones with that second effort is going to pick up enough for a first down. He's tackled by Wilkinson and the clock keeps running with under five minutes to play. The Bears second most points in the game against the Giants in that game back in 1943 
Sid Luckman. The greatest of all the, the Bear quarterbacks through seven touchdown passes. Isn't it something how every time you do a Bear game, you bring up Sid Luckman? That, I mean, everything goes back to Sid Luckman. I mean, the last time a quarterback ever did anything, it always gets back to old Sid. I mean, you go through the Bear record book and you can't believe how long some of those records have been in existence. For instance, Johnny Morris, who played you know, nearly 40 years ago, still holds the record for receiving yards. Yeah, because they, you know, in, in all those years since Johnny Morris, they haven't had a lot of quarterbacks, so therefore they didn't have a big passing game. I mean, the Bears have been about, you know, running game and defense and that kind of football. And maybe, maybe Rex Grossman is going to be the guy that turns this around. <laughs> He's going to give you a few thrills along the way. We know that. Well, he is, but you know, <laughs> we brought up last night to Levy Smith, you know, Brian Greasy, and he said, no, no, no way. He said, there's no way that, that he would make a change. Benson here. And meanwhile, for the Giants, of course, there's only one story right now, and that's that list. And, and that list, I, I don't know how much better it's going to get. You know, the Tumor and Arrington, well, they're done for the season. I think they'll get short back soon. Emmons was a possibility for tonight. We don't know about Strahan. They go down south the next two weeks. They go to Jacksonville a week from tomorrow. Then they go to Tennessee. And then they have a, a huge game against Dallas in here on December the 3rd. Because right now, with the Cowboys winning today against Arizona, Dallas is back to within a game of first place. I talked to Michael Strahan the other day. I saw him in the training room and uh, he said that it doesn't feel bad. He said it really doesn't hurt. They have him on crutches and he's lifting weights and he said he'll he thinks he'll be back sooner than a lot of people are saying. You know you just sometimes hope that's not wishful thinking. It's like remember Sean Alexander telling us on October 1st. Oh I could be back next week. Well. He's still not back. Yeah, and then he thought he was going to be back the next week. Remember, he came in and started running. They took a picture, and it was still broken. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, Michael may have a little of that in him. I mean, he was he was in the weight room when I saw him, and, and saying he felt pretty good, and thought he'd be back. But you know, again, four weeks from now, he may be saying that same thing. They need him back off that spring foot in a hurry. Two-minute warning: the Bears about ready to go eight and one. To Denver next Sunday night. Meanwhile, Tiki Barber numbers look good, 141 yards, but not the result. Brian Greasy, one time Bronco starter, then Miami and Tampa. Now the backup here in Chicago can just run the clock out. If Ed Hockey Lee, the referee will let him. <laughs> now he will. And this is a, a sight at the end of the first half you didn't think was possible. The Bears running the clock out and going home with an 18 point victory. Well, you know, Andrew was talking about what Marty Schottenheimer told his team, you know, just go out and play the second half like it's 0 0. Maybe Levy Smith told those Bears the same thing because this was really a tale of two halves. I mean, an eight came out in the second half. And they were a totally different team. Well, the Bears were held to three points in the first 28 minutes. And then they ring up 35 points over the last 32 minutes. And the forlorn Feely sits on the bench. That missed field goal attempt resulting in the 108 yard run by Hester. Moose and Muhammad just went out and got the, a kid out of the. Uh, how the stands brought him down the sideline. That's when you know you're winning 38 20. And for Eli and company, it's on to Jacksonville. And the Jaguars, a wounded team right now, losing to the Texans today for the second time this season. Murray stays to the end. He'll be here next week, too. Might as well. The Bears come right back to take on the Jets. And how about the Jets win today against the New England Patriots? Yeah, the Patriots may have more problems than advertised. Yep. 
life in the NFL. Nobody knows anything. Bears last week look awful. Turn it over six times. Lose to Miami, a team that had won one game. Lose by 18. Come in here tonight. Don't look good at all until there were two minutes left in the half. Jones turns the game around on the third and 22. And the next thing you know, the Chicago Bears are two games up in the NFC, and they've already knocked off the Giants. Next week, Chicago back here at the Jets. The following week, at New England. So a tough road trip, but a good beginning for the Bears. 3820 Sirius Satellite Radio Postgame Report coming up.